All right, 12.06 p.m. All right, what do you got? What are you saying, Dutch? And we are free. So enjoy yourselves. Life is good. Oh, life is good. You hear that, Mr. Pearson? Life is very good, sir. Very good indeed. So all of you, keep busy and stay out of the worst of trouble out there. <laughs> we made it. Did we? I thought, I, what are you saying, man? Like, first it's, this is shit. We got a, blah, blah. now it's, we're free. We made it. Well said, Dutch. Are you keeping busy? Of course, you know me. Oh, baseball caps all the way, Bodega. You kidding me? I don't know, man. Maybe he's. Here, maybe he's just thinking to himself, like, all right, I got an idea for what we're going to do, and we're free because of what's coming, not because of where we are. I don't, I mean, I don't know. Dutch is, Dutch is Dutch at this point. All right, let's do some chores. Hi, right, Deshaun. I'm going to chop some wood here again. Do my part around here. Mr. Morgan. Dutch strikes me as a peacock. Yeah. Funny to me how satisfying this is to do in a game. And like in real life, I'd want nothing to do with chopping wood. Like I wouldn't want to do this at all. Video game? Yeah, hell yeah. Let's go. Let's chop. We gotta, we gotta make our, earn our keep around here. Important. I really love that the more you play, the more you develop a cowboy accent. I know, kind of go through the whole thing like this sometimes. Boom. Good shit. To whoever collected that wood, thank you very much. Hey, Arthur. Uh, yeah. Finest whittler in all Ireland. Reverend, you gonna help out around here? Jesus, you never end up, do you? Just do your share, okay? All right. Me too. Me too. Start by putting that sharp piece of wood in your pocket. Come on, Sean. It happens. Are you well, Mr. Morgan? Well, I'm alive, Miss Grimshaw. Please. Girls, Mr. Morgan, they're driving me to despair. Why? No gratitude and no manners. This younger generation, it saddens me. The world is ruined. The amount of times older generations bitch about younger generations and don't realize that they're the ones that have reinforced environmentally and through nurture the younger generation that they so deeply despise is just numbs my brain man like if you don't like the younger generation and how they showed up you got to reflect on how you raised them reflect on the choices you made about creating the environment that they are growing up within like the lack of, and this is like almost universal like the lack of of self-reflection in older generations when they look at younger generations and what they don't like about them drives me nuts. It drives me absolutely nuts. And I'm not trying to make a generalization. I know there are folks in older generations that understand all this stuff. But my God, the amount of times people in younger generations hear that shit. All right, I'll be right back. I'm going to go tuck my beautiful wife into bed and then we'll keep going.
Alright. Another thing to add to my list. What happened? The law caught up with us in San Francisco. She jumped aboard a ship and sailed. Oh man, Martius, thanks for sharing that, man. I hope so too. I'm married in a way, but it hasn't been terribly fulfilling. Have a seat and a swig, no. Arthur. I suppose not. Oh man, that's a conversation I would have loved to have seen. All right, let's see what these fellas talk about if I sit with them real quick. What's up, fellas? We saw black water. There's Pinkertons everywhere. So no getting in? I don't think so. Not for now, anyway. Anyway, I won't disturb you. All right, then. All right, so how do you do? So we did pretty well at that train job, but the law showed up real fast. Too fast? It sure seemed that way to me. But anyway, we made it out. Well, I should get back to it. Okay, Arthur. Ah, uh, no, Caboozle, I don't. If I miss it, I miss it. Thanks again for coming fishing with me. I wish those mean men hadn't ruined it. Ah, uh, don't worry about them, okay? All right. Uh, let's get ourselves a shave and let's head to town. Get the we gotta get the chops down to it. Get the chops down to a two. We normally been going to a three, but we're we're going to a two. Mustache, we'll leave the mustache out. I don't have any pomade for the hair, but all right. Okay, mm let's see. Let's go. Oh, we got some more chores to do. Hello, Arthur. Howdy, Bill. No, it's all good, Caboozle. I appreciate you asking instead of telling me. Them sacks ain't gonna move themselves, I Why are these sacks over here when Pearson's wagon is over there? Can't we be a little more efficient with where we set these down? Like, it's not that much farther to take them over here to Pearson's wagon. What are we doing? You know, Arthur, it's the illness of romantics. What is hope? Hope is... That's literally what you live your life on. Hope is the illness of the romantics? Is that just is that just Dutch subtly saying to us I'm a I'm a romantic? Is that him trying to make himself a a dramatic figure? No, man, I, he he makes himself so unlikable to me. I I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. You're right. He's just got that book he's reading. Thinks he's Mr. Smarty Pants. He thinks you're romantic, does he? I ain't really been one for hope. <laughs> Dutch belongs in the I'm 14 and this is deep subreddit. Yeah, right. Perhaps he's proposing some activities to you. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. I mean, y'all had... Y'all saw me thinking incest last night. With that other guy in Emerald City, so... Ah, 
All right, one more bag of oats, and then we'll get out of here. What's up, Fida? I still stand by that hypothesis. I still stand by it. It was not totally unreasonable. Hello, Arthur. Howdy, Miss Grimshaw. Oh, hi, Uncle. Y'all sure are well supplied. We do our best. All right. Good shit. Earning my keep around here. All right, what do we got here? We got uh, we got John Marston down at and Micah. I don't really want much to do with Micah right now, so let's go. Let's go meet John Marston down in Valentine. That sounds good to me. I hear you saved Mr. Bell from a hanging. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I suppose he'd do the same for you. Exactly. We're all in this together, Mr. Morgan. I know you know that. Of course, Miss Grimshaw. I certainly do. All right, Steve, where are you, buddy? Let's ride. Let's go get Mr. Marston. Miss Karen, how you getting up? a damsel in distress and now they got me protecting the men <laughs> just stay alert oh i shall do if anyone tries anything i'll blow their heads off nice i love that female security team let's go Mr. Marston. Mr. Marston. Out in Valentine. I agree, Caboozle. Oh, shit. Is this train being robbed? Move it. Move it. On your knees. Cancers. We will not take up a moment longer than we got to. Give over your money and your valuable. Oh. Come back, Kim Padre here, and we will be on our merry way. Please. Please. No, 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 no. Don't, don't hurt us. We'll give you whatever we got. And all of it? All right, then. You want to get notched? Get the hell out of here! That's right. Get the hell out of here, fellas. I'm the law. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I know this was originally run by an Adriscal. However, I will be uh, making sure that all cargo is secured on this train before we uh, before we let you on your merry way. I know you won't mind if I do some inspections. You might recall back from the wax factory that I am indeed a proxy for OSHA. I would just like to ensure... That everything is up to code. Oh my god, man. The Driscoll's just... Jesus. I don't want to be associated with this, so I'm, uh... Just, uh... I'm just gonna make sure... Is that a witness? Really hope not. Oh shit, that guy. That guy saw what happened. Holy hell! Yeah, holy hell indeed! I just stopped it, sirs. Don't you mind me. Again, just doing inspections. Just making sure that everything is where it was before the robbery. Come on, okay. 
All right. Well, hopefully this train gets rolling soon. I'm going to Valentine to let the law know. Don't don't mind me, gentlemen. Hey, partner. What you think you're doing? It's all good. Calm down. Thanks for wasting my time. Hey, brother. I was just how I stopped it. All those fine folks got out of there because of me. Yeah. Oh shit! Not paying attention. Okay, pardon me, indeed. All right, let's get to Valentine. Now that we stopped those nasty, nasty O'Driscolls. I got real bad nerves. I can't work. Can you give me some money? Mickey, what's up, man? You still struggling, brother? I mean, at this point, every time I come to Valentine, I might as well just throw you a dollar. What's up, man? Hey, Mr. Mr. Arthur. Why are you always so mad? You're crazy. All that shooting. And they said I was crazy. I'm not crazy. Not like you. You beat up the big fella. He once beat me up. I asked for it. You think you're real crazy, mister? No. Are you really calling me crazy? I fought in a war, mister. I did. Sent me strange seeing all them fellas die. Which war was that exactly? A bad one, Mr. Arthur. Oh, a real bad. There's good wars? Uh, I... I saw terrible things. I ain't been the same since. Uh, I get... I get... funny. I'll go now. Don't act crazy now. Man. Mickey saw some shit. Mickey seems like he's got a big heart. Watching all his friends die, man. That'll mess a person up. Sometimes I wonder. I bet Mickey wonders sometimes why he's the one that got to survive. It's a common sentiment, by the way. Uh, when people go out, particularly when they're at war and they lose a lot of people, like in their platoon or their troop or whatever, uh, sometimes that question of why did I, why am I the one that survived? Why am I the one that has to live and remember everybody who died? Sometimes there's even the thought maybe it would have been easier for me to die because now I got to pick up all the pieces of what it's like to be back. And to be alive and not have the people around me that, you know, I was accustomed to having around me. It's, it's a really complex circumstance, man. I feel bad for the guy. Hey, mister. How you doing? Today ain't my day. Mister? Hello. What's the matter, sir? You remind me of a fella I used to know. Uh-huh. Now. I got mail. He possibly have PTSD. I'm to hurt you. Sure. No, he absolutely could. You yeah. Wait. Next time you better be ready to finish this. Finish what? What are you pissed about? Get out of here. You got time for this shit. Hello there and welcome. I mean, Mickey saying he's crazy is not like a ready, like it's not an absolute indication of PTSD. Like I, I, I really, I want to make sure that I make this clear that like PTSD is not something that exists just because somebody experienced trauma. Not everybody who experienced traumatic instances or goes to war, comes home with PTSD. PTSD is a complex response to trauma where it's where you have pervasive, it has a pervasive impact on your day-to-day -day living as the result of the trauma in a way that's like not what we would expect it to have. So Mickey might have PTSD, he might not. Whether he does or not doesn't change the effect that the war had on him. So even if he had, even if there is an adverse reaction 
to what he saw at war. That is still important. Mickey doesn't have to be diagnosable with PTSD for us to listen to him and to suggest that maybe he needs to talk to somebody and for him to find some coping strategies to deal with the way he was affected. A person's response to trauma is no less important if they're not diagnosable as having PTSD than if they were. And I think that's really important to understand. We kind of use PTSD as a blanket term for people who experience trauma and have a reaction to it. And that's not what PTSD is. PTSD is a certain type of reaction that a person has over time that by virtue of having the D and the diagnosis, we consider to be a disordered response to the trauma. Very, very important point to understand. Survivor's guilt had that when my older brother loved and respected by everybody. Mom's favorite got cancer and dad died, left me the one they didn't know what to do with as the only surviving child. Sister died at 23, brother at 56. I'm sorry to hear that, Sully. But we have to be careful not to name everything PTSD. Uh, you really do. Hey, Bounty. Quite the bounty you acquired, ain't it? Oh my god. All right, well. A lot of money, but now nobody's after me. Take care now. Well, what's the mail? How do I... I want to check my mail. You leave something behind? Good day to you. There a problem here? Out of the damn way! Yes. Excuse me. Excuse me. Don't poke a mean dog. Yo! I'm sorry there. Well, that's a relief. Yeah, like you were gonna do anything if I wasn't sorry. Uh... Oh no, I know, Mona. I know what you meant. I'm not suggesting that that's what you were saying. I just have Why to make that point. He oh. could be, but I would have to do an assessment to say whether Mickey has PTSD. I can't just... I can't just say, yep, that person's got PTSD. That's reckless. Even though it's a video game character. I can't, you can't do that. Mental illness is not something that you just, you see one thing and you go, yeah, that person must have that. And too many of us, um, and by us, I mean just humans, too many of us do that. Oh, that person did something selfish. They must be a narcissist. Oh, that person likes things to be in an orderly fashion. They must have OCD. Oh, that person's anxious. They must have generalized anxiety disorder. Oh, that person has a hard time focusing. They must have ADHD. That's not how this stuff works. And, I, you know, I really kind of caution people to use that kind of language. Or, or to stay away from using that kind of language. Like, it very well could just be that a person is just struggling to focus in that moment. It, it may be that the anxiety that a person's experiencing that moment is completely, like, to be expected. Because anxiety is not in an is not inherently a disorder to have. Uh, we just, we get way too quick to pull the trigger on diagnoses instead of just allowing certain behaviors to be what they are. You have to do a full assessment as a therapist before you can ever provide a diagnosis to explain the behaviors that's going on for somebody. And these are behaviors that need to be present for long periods of time. I'm not talking week, I'm not even talking a month. Like we're talking years at some point. So, um, I just, I, I really, it's important for me to make that point. Uh, I don't know whether I will, Sean. I'm more interested in just focusing on the game I'm playing now, right now. Um, if PTSD isn't the only way someone can react to trauma, what are some other way, common ways? Well, PTSD is not in and of itself like a, like a specific reaction to trauma. PTSD can show up in different ways. But like, for example, a person being hypervigilant for a while after experiencing a trauma. That's perfectly reasonable. A person having a, an intense emotional response when they think about the trauma. That's, a, that's certainly a way. You know, my, maybe a person has trouble sleeping. Maybe a person has certain times of the year where their mood becomes a little bit more depressed because they associate that time of year with, with the trauma they experience. There's all sorts of ways that people respond to trauma that don't fit the diagnostic criteria for PTSD, but it doesn't make them any less important. Well, that's just the way 
I was wondering if you might have any sort of idea about what level of understanding people had about psychological concepts IRL at the time this game is set in. Probably none. Like, I'm pretty confident saying that the idea that people would talk psychology at this point... I mean, Freud's not really even around yet. So probably very, very low. All right, Mr. Marston. Hey, mister. Hello. Hello, mister. Hello there, mister. Hey, mister. Howdy, partner. All right, John, where are you, buddy? What do you got for me? So, feeling better? How's the scar? I heal pretty fast. Lucky you. So you just lazing about and you got any leads? I got something. You see them? Sure. Well, you see yourself as a shepherd now? Maybe. Come on. Well, where exactly are we going? Collect something. Help us get some sheep. Uh, you know, that attempt to seem all enigmatic and interesting, that might work for Dutch, but for you, it just makes you look stupid. Come along. You'll see. That train job was a start, but we need more money. You coming? That was, uh... That was a bit of a shot. From Arthur to, to John. <laughs> Your attempts to seem all enigmatic and interesting might work for Dutch, but they make you look stupid. Well, I have no doubt that John has learned that that's how you get people motivated. That's how Dutch gets everybody in the group to do things. And so if you're a member of a group and you're looking at leadership and how it motivates folks and how you get people to do the stuff that you need them to do, he's absolutely learned from Dutch that you have to be charismatic. You have to, you have to blow things up. You have to be somewhat cryptic. I have no doubt that John learned that from Dutch and probably thinks that's going to work on Arthur. And Arthur is a bit more intelligent than a lot of the other folks in the group. I mean, hell, he used the word enigmatic to John. And he sniffs that out. I don't really know that I agree with Arthur giving John a hard time for that, other than him calling him out for some inauthenticity there. But John learning to do that to inspire the people he's around to do stuff, that's exactly where it comes from. Absolutely. There's no way it couldn't with how long John's been part of the group. So, yeah, until we can get back to Blackwater and collect. I'm here to tell you, if we try to collect that money anytime soon, it'll come with a noose. I was worried you'd say that. Dutch says that we... Dutch says a lot. That's his gift. Saying things. <laughs> oh, yeah? What do you mean by that? I was a prize pony once. Now I'm the workhorse. Listen, Dutch is... But, well, you was at that thing in Blackwater. We already seen Pinkerton's here. New century's coming. This life, this way, well, we're the last, I reckon. And we ain't long for it. And that's the way it goes, I guess. For me, yes. All right. So where are we going? Just need to pick up something. Some there. of the random shit people Tell say, horse, man. You cross the street. I already don't like how this is going. Howdy, sir. 
Um, who's this guy in the jeans and turtleneck? Howdy. Is that Luke Skywalker? That guy looks like Luke Skywalker to me. All right, John's not really telling us what we're doing. This will be fun. I don't really like where this is going either. Look how big this horse is. Look how big that horse is. Hello. Never in my life would I be impressed by the size of a horse until I play this game. And now all of a sudden there's like no this internal this. part of me that's like, damn, that's a mighty beast. Steve, don't worry, man. You're denser than this guy. Look at that horse. Good Lord. Go into the gun shop with John gun Marston. School. Yep. Can you uh, head in, pick up a sniper rifle? I'll explain later. Don't you wear yourself out now. And <laughs> yeah, no shit, John. Hey, hey, man, just buy a sniper rifle. We'll worry about it later. We just hey, you, need something with a scope on it. Okie dokie, John. I've got hello, binoculars. Hello again. How can I help you today? How are you, sir? Looking for a rifle. Something with a sight on it. Shouldn't be a problem. You want to see what we've got? It's all in the catalog here. Uh, okie dokie, sir. View the rifle section of the cat. Oh, <gasps> this is a different catalog. I thought this was the same catalog. Wheeler and Rawson, Consumer Guides. Our trade reaches around the world. Cheapest supply house on earth. It is the occasional policy of our house to supply the customer in every aspect of the goods they buy and save them money. And deliver via wagon, express freight or rail. To you anywhere in the United States, even the sylvan hollers where the loneliness of siblings causes disquiet and longings that can only be alleviated through the good book and the catalog you hold in your hands. You can furnish yourself and your to the finest standard with items contained in these pages, and you will soon surpass in stature everyone in your pitiable town. Guaranteed. We instruct all of our employees and sales agents to treat every customer in the manner they deserve based on income, lineage, and breeding so that they may secure their continued patronage. Our goods are far superior quality to any retailer, and we feel under obligation to do all that we can to secure your business to the demise of theirs. In addition, it is our aim to honestly illustrate every article on our offer in this catalog. Illustrations are engraved from photographs and worked on meticulously by our art department. There will be, at times, subtle, mild, or drastic differences between the product received and the illustration. This is of no fault, of course, it is well known that artists are morose, desultory lot, frequency, frequently consumed by caprices and intoxicants, and they are quite they are frankly lucky to have employment altogether. This catalog will undoubtedly fall into the hands of those who are not familiarized with the fact that we are the best supply house on earth. Should you encounter someone that expresses such incredulous doubt, Flip open the page in this catalog and point to any article herein and demand that they explain what other concern can ship this item to the far corners of the earth for such unusually low prices. They will stammer, of course, and if for some reason do not admit defeat, you would be justified maintaining your obligation to civilization by dealing with them promptly and brutishly and with the utmost care to summon the townspeople to observe this wretch get his due. We always sell the lowest prices. All our stock is delivered direct from our warehouses located across the country. Purpose-built Wheeler, Rawson & Co. Warehouse, 14,000 square feet of goods contained within these walls. Payments on all goods accepted in cash. Oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> God, I love these. I love these. All right, let's go to the rifle section. Oh, baby. The rolling block rifle. It is a courageous man who shoots from afar. <laughs> it is a coward who drops a man from merely feet away. For those that believe close quarter combat is for the foolhardy and indeed short-lived, then the Litchfield rolling block rifle is a wonder to behold. Friend, do you enjoy sharp shooting? Thanks to the powerful scope, you are able to view targets from a great distance, which gives a tactical advantage. 
Rear leaf or ivory front sights are no comparison to the high-grade optical lens that magnifies objects in the distance. Whether you like to set up tin cans on the fence post or massacre a family of woodchucks, the Litchfield Rolling Block Rifle provides hours of entertainment as long as you order an ample supply of cartridges from our company. Built by the Litchfield Armory Company, a powerful tool for pleasure. The scope serves as a powerful tool for other uses as well. We received this delightful dispatch from Lucas Perkins of Missouri. I had spent several months in trapping and fishing along a bluff by the river when I heard laughter in the distance one afternoon. Then I spied down the river a piece of some maidens who were doing the washing and hanging linens and laundry up to dry. I grabbed my Litchfield rolling block rifle so I could obtain a better perspective. Imagine my sentiments when through the powerful lens atop that rifle I could see the washwomen were not only cleaning the clothes in the river, but had disrobed and were cleaning one another. I recognized one to be the handsome stable girl that worked at the Henderson's ranch. She had rejected my advances at the spring barn dance. Yet here she was, with four others frolicking in birthday suits in the Tallahassee River. The thought crossed my mind to squeeze that trigger and ensure my name would be remembered along the women of that valley for years to come. However, I was so quaking in my excitement and what was unfolding in front of me, I nary could have squeezed off an accurate shot. The moment resonates with me and gives me pleasure especially during hard, cold winters when I do not encounter another living soul for months at a time. I thank your company for providing such a useful device. Oh my god. Many long-range rifles are acquired with a list of empty promises. However, the Litchfield Rolling Block Rifle comes with the guarantee and refund offer. We will return your money at once if you are not satisfied with the, with the action of this rifle. Take it into a field with early morning hours. Wait until a creature appears hundreds of yards in the distance. Peep through that side at the complacent and satisfied look on the beast's face, then pull the trigger and watch its head clean explode. If you do not thoroughly enjoy this activity, if it does not light a fire in the essence of your soul, then return it express at our expense, and we will spare you the embarrassment and seek someone with the mental fortitude for such a fine weapon. The luxurious sound of deafening joy. Each and every rifle is targeted and tested at our factory. It is well-known fact that no living thing exists within miles of the factory where the Litchfield Rolling Block Rifle is manufactured. Our team has so thoroughly tested each gun. <clears throat> the result is an eerie silence. However, it allows our engineers to focus on perfecting each and every model of gun we manufacture. Many of our engineers so thoroughly enjoy testing each model that they have gone deaf, an occurrence that adds to focus, and improves marriage life. <laughs> I oh my god, I love it so much. These are so good. I want to read every single one of them, man. Like there's so somebody went through and wrote these for every gun in the game, every piece of ammo. Oh my god. It's just so perfect. Holy cow. All right, let's 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 buy the rolling block rifle. Thank you, sir. Let's take a look at the components here. I did not mean to buy that, but I guess we have improved rifling now. That's fun. Okie dokie. Ooh, the long scope. Short scope. We'll go medium scope. That's fine. That's probably good. Let's get ourselves a wrap. I do I do like having a wrap on it. That that's Um, let's get ourselves uh I like the dark. Let's get ourselves the chocolate for 450. Hmm, some varnish. Hmm. Ooh, that cherry's nice. That's nice. Ooh, that is a fine weapon indeed. Get some ammunition. Uh, two bucks for thirty. Yep. All righty. Rolling block rifle. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it immensely. I'll be going now. All right, Marston. Why do I have this thing? What are we doing? Sure. 
Let's go. Hey there. Oh, it's John's horse? What? How did John get that big ass horse? What are you doing, John? It's fine. It's how you ride the horse. That's right. All right, John. You done that? <laughs> done what? Bought that gun. Uh, I had a run in with that fella earlier. We ain't on the best of terms. You had a run in. I've had a run in with half that town. Damn it. Calm down. Move it. Come on. I'm coming, John. So, you were saying? Calm down. It's done now, ain't it? Why are you being so cagey about all this? Always playing some goddamn game. Me? I ain't the one taking Jack on fishing trips. No, you ain't. If you say the boy ain't yours, what's the difference? You probably only run off again. Why are you so interested in my life? Ain't you got one of your own? Just do one thing or another. Not be two people at once, that's all I'm saying. It ain't that simple. You know that as well as anyone. Same as with you and that girl. What was her name? Mary? That was different. No, it ain't. Just the same. Anyway, for the love of God, will you tell me what you got me doing here before I turn around and hit the breeze? <laughs> There's a herd of sheep coming down to auction from Emerald Ranch. Folk in town were saying the owner's trying to stamp out every farm from here to Ansburg. Yeah, I know that place. I mean, Arthur's got some disdain for... I mean, I, I think at this point it's been pretty well established that John... Or Arthur's disdain for John is because John left the group. You know? And, uh... I, I, but it is true. John has a point. Like, Arthur's investment in John is interesting, right? Like, it's obvious that Arthur hasn't written John off. But he's also not quite willing to take John as he is. And is, you know, asking him to be, I think, a person that would be more palatable for him. Somebody that Arthur could understand. Arthur seems to be struggling to expand his idea of who John Marston is. And why he does what he does. We don't see a lot of curiosity there. We see more judgment. We see a desire for him to go back to being what Arthur can anticipate, what he what he understands, what he knows. And I think a lot of us do this. We we actually have a hard time with when the people around us change. We have a hard time when people's motivations and values are different from our own. It's harder to be curious than it is to try to push people back into the box that we have them in. And so some of this dialogue to me, I, I think shows Arthur doing that with John. And John's frustration with that, I think is understandable. Easy now. Let's head up to the ridge up there. Get a proper view. Yes, sir. So I'm thinking that the herd will make it to auction all right, but a couple of new ranch hands will be collected on the sale. Doubt the town will care to notice too much. Why we need this rifle you couldn't buy yourself. Reckon we shouldn't get too close. At least not till we know what we're dealing with. Let's see what we can see from up here. John, I have binoculars. Why do I need a sniper rifle, bud? God, what a beautiful, just what a beautiful game. Oh my goodness. Okay, I think that's them over there. The one now. Put a shot in near them. I reckon they'll hightail it. They're only ranch hands. Just watch the sheep. Shoot near the ranchers to scare them off. Oh, geez. Okay, so these guys, so we're not trying to kill them, we're trying to... Looks like one of them don't scare too easy. Put another shot in close. 
He'll get the message. <laughs> that ought to do it. <laughs> Go on, get. All right. Let's go round them up. Well, John, why don't we wait a minute? I, okay. All right, fine. <laughs> Let's go get the sheep. Hey, boy. Let's go get these guys. Strays. You ever work on a ranch, Marston? No. You? Oh, day here or there, but not much. Most cowboys I know are dumb as trees. How hard could it be? I guess we'll soon find out. Uh, Let's yeah. Let's get these things. This is not going to be this is not going to be super easy here. Let's get them all rounded up. All right, come on. Come on. Hold on now. Come on. Go, go. Dr. Rancher. All right, we got these guys here. Let's go ahead. No, John, John, what are you doing, brother? I have to go on the other side of you. Because John's just in a big old hurry. There we go. There we go. That's how it's done right there. Whoa. Come on, John. Get the other one over here. Hey, 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 hey. All right, I think we got them all. Let's head to town. You know what? Marston, why don't you leave the sheep to me? You ride Shank. Keep watch for any trouble. I brought you in on this. It'll be quicker this way. Trust me. This ain't the right time for you to be learning how to hurt. All right, whatever you say. I'm I agree with that. I absolutely agree with that. This ain't the time to learn, Mr. Marston. Uh, uh. Hey, 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 hey. That's it. Quickest route back to Valentine is right around that mountain. Okay. Like I said, I'll handle this. Boom! Yeah. Calm it down. Something tells me this ain't gonna be that easy. Do you provide physical therapy for lumbago? No, I do not. I am a uh, therapist of the brain, Dog Water Club. Let's go. Come on. Come on, ain't nobody got time for stragglers. Let's go. Come out. Come out. Get with the group there. There we go. Thank you, amigo. Hey, 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 hey. Come on. There you got it. Watch them runners. This will go a lot faster if you shut up, Marston. Hey, 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 hey. Back with the group. Yeah. There's some getting away. Oh, shit. Oh, get back here. Hey! Hey! Let's go. Let's go. Back with the group. Come on! Close her up, boys. There you go. I have Kavoozle. Sheep. They're okay. Well, you seem better around here. <laughs> I've seen ones with less ambiguity. 
about their provenance? <laughs> a lot less. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say you give me 25% kickback, and I won't say nothing to nobody. Everything all right here? Excuse me? Sure. I'll excuse you for 25%. Do you want me to put another hole in your head? Folks swing for rustling livestock. 25%. 15. 20. 18. Done. All right, John. Calm yourself, friend. Just think of it as I'm buying your sins. Uh, you're buying. We're paying. Go on now. Come back after the auction. You'll get your money. Dutch is waiting for us at the saloon. He is? Boy. Nice job, John. Nice job. Arthur doesn't take too kindly to bravado. 18%. I thought we was doing the robbing here. Still good money. Thanks for all the help with this. Can't hurt, can't swim. Give it a rest, will you? We ain't kids no more. Oh, shit. No, he never really was. Yeah, I mean, good, good boundaries, John. I don't understand Arthur giving him such a hard time with that. Like, I thought he was legitimately thanking him for his help there. John's doing his part for the group. I don't know what more you want from him, Arthur. I'll buy you a whiskey. Hey, there's Nightbot. Not everything, but After in the you, end, sir. I don't believe in absolutes, just shades of gray. Compromises. Compromises. Well, I am... Uh, gentlemen. Dutch, Mapo. Where have you been? Working. Marston's thing. Good. And? We're just waiting to get some pay on a few sheep. Leopold, my good friend, as long as you're here, why don't you and John go make sure there ain't no funny business? Of course. Gentlemen, drink? Sure. <clears throat> Nothing like talking to old Strauss to make you want to blow your own brains out. I should have left him where I found him all those years ago. Bookish little Austrian, fresh off the boat, his eyes out on stalks. Well, I guess the Dutch Vanderlyn finishing school has some strange graduates. That it does. To your good health. Thank you. What the hell? Vandalin! You don't know me, but you keep robbing me! My name is Leviticus Cornwall! Oh, shit! I am not a man to be messed with by the likes of you! Get out here before I have these men killed! What do you think? Get out here, well, I... you depraved piece of trash! You start spinning a yarn. When I think the moment's you right, I'll make a move. I got where I am by letting Scott block you rob from me? Vandalin, you're done. Now get out here now. Deal with this nonsense. Oh, shit. Please, gentlemen, this is a terrible mistake. This is a case. Your mistaken identity. What is worse than admonishing a man for the sins of another? Who wants to be the Messiah? Not me. Nor do I want to be this Vanderlyn, whomever he may be. Shit, I did not do that right. Let's move on! 
Strauss just get shot in the leg? Oh shit. About those shots, baby. Come on, Rob Strauss. Please like this. Come on, buddy. Come on. I got you. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Run. Cover me. Cover me. Cover me. Oh. Can we call him the horses? Now's our chance. Come on. Put Strauss on the back of John's horse. You make sure nobody's following us. We'll get back to camp. We're going to gather the troops and get them to start packing up. Ugh. Sure. We can't stick around after this. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. All right. I better get out of here. Amazing cart I'm behind. Oh god, hang on, Steve. Where's my hat? I don't have it. Don't need it. Come on, Steve. Let's go. Let's go, Steve. Go! Oh god! Let's go. We ain't gonna be walking around these parts anymore. Oh, shit. Oh, God. Holy crap. Let's go, Steve. Oh, my God. Woo, baby, oh baby, okay. Well, so much for paying my bounty, huh? That ain't the hat I want. There we go. Yeah. Holy crap. Well, I cannot say that that was particularly ideal. Not good when the rich folks are after you. Oi, oi, oi. All right. Well, I mean, yeah, we're Valentine's basically off limits at this point. I guess we let's go back and see what's going on with Dutch because. Yeah.
Man, we're gonna have to move camp now. We're probably gonna have to hightail it out of here quickly. might be the most loyal of the lot of us. What else is there? Well, you're right about that. Sounds good. I love his, like, poncho thing. So, we keep heading east. Is that the plan? For now. And when do we stop? When we reach Paris? <laughs> That'd be nice. Join the commune. We stop when we find someplace sensible. Shake them that's following us and lie low. This is lying low? We turned into a bunch of killers. I mean it. We ain't even got the delusion of being anything but a bunch of killers. We are just trying to survive, Hosea. We don't have a choice. Yes, this we do. This will end soon. Damn right it will. Constipated as usual. Yes, we do have a choice. We don't have to do any of this shit. I'm glad Jose is talking to him a little bit, though. We definitely aren't lying low, though. No, sir. I can appreciate Jose there. Oh, we've already started to take camp down at this point. Well, that was a mess in Valentine. We didn't even get paid for them sheep. I'm going to go back there for it. That ain't a good idea. Okay, I'll catch you later, then. Uh-huh. Just trying to make friendly talk with you, John. Let's see what everybody else thinks about what's hey, going on. Abigail. What the hell happened in Valentine with you and John? We survived just, but we can't stay here for long. Bill. Hello. A bottle in your hand. There's a surprise. I'm entitled to a drink. How are you, Jose? Well, save some for the rest of us. All right, Morgan. All right, Hosea, tell me a little bit more about that. Because I, I can appreciate that going after Dutch there. I want to talk to Hosea, not Abigail. Hey. Arthur. Hey, Jack. Oh, Driscoll boy. Hi. Nervy little feller, ain't you? Wouldn't you be? Don't cross us, and you'll be fine. Now take care. Oh, my God. Let it go, Arthur. Gentlemen. Hey there. Why don't you sit instead of prowling around the place? How are you? Well, okay, so I understand why we have to go. I agree with the sentiments and chat that like it sucks that we got to leave this place. We were getting settled. We were starting to do stuff. We were making we were making money. <sighs> this is kind of what I've been talking about all along though. Right? Like this is what our group is built around. We are a nomadic group. We are a group that gets in trouble and has to chase other stuff. We make decisions that Dutch will tell us we don't have a choice to make that catch up with us. So we're always on the run. But that's baked into us. I mean, look how fast we took the camp down. Everybody here knows exactly what to do. People were starting to get stir crazy when we're all in the same place because they don't exactly know how to handle that. They don't know what to do with themselves. They don't know who they are. All of a sudden, this shit goes down. Boom! Pack it up. Let's go. Time to roll. That's how groups function. They know, like, we go with what we know. If you really want this to be a group of people who are like free and settled, we have to start making different choices about what we do. We're looking for a big payday. This is not the kind of world where there's a giant payday available to you unless you do some illegal shit. Shit that's going to catch up with you. But this whole cycle just perpetuates itself. We're constantly moving because that's what we know. And so we might sit here and go, oh, this sucks. Here we go again. 
But the here we go again is in some ways very comfortable for this group because we know what we're doing when this happens. Right? People aren't freaking out right now. People are like, yep, here we go. Got to keep moving. That's what happens. It's very hard to change individuals. It's even more hard to change groups. And we really have to have a group identity shift in order to be able to stay put. And we're just, we're not in circumstances that are allowing that. We have to be proactive about that. This idea that we don't have a choice, that's, a, that's bullshit. Yes, we do. You seem in a good mood. I do. See, but like, look at every, look at this, chat. Look how chill everybody, we packed everything down. Everything's condensed. We're ready to go. No problem. Jose is pissed about it. I think Arthur's probably a little bit annoyed about it. But everybody here is like, all right. No problem. Pack up the wagons. We'll go. It, it shows you, like, if you want to know what a group is all about, if you want to know what the general equilibrium of a group of people is, whether it's a family or a workforce or whatever, look for patterns in the times where, in general, the group is most comfortable and least reactive. And you will generally find what that group is closely identified with and what their general process is when they are calm because there's tension outside of equilibrium. When groups get tense, it means something's been jostled. Something is outside of their expectations. Everybody here is just chilling and making it work. No problem. Nobody's antsy. Nobody's walking around. People aren't picking fights with each other. Everybody's like, boom, crisis mode, ready to go. That's what this group's all about. That's how you learn about the groups that you're a part of. When are they most chill? That's their ideal equilibrium. All right, so now we got to talk to Dutch and see what he wants to do here. So, we moving? Yeah. Micah told me of a place we can lie low. Look here. Dewberry Creek, he said. Okay. Maybe you and Charles can go take a look, clear off anyone you find before the whole lot of us move in looking so conspicuous. And how are we going to do that? I don't know. Start dancing? Looks like I turned into a goddamn errand boy. You have turned into my son. You worry because I worry. We are just the same. Charles, come with me. We got work to do. Sure, this can wait. You have turned into my son. He's essentially saying there, don't you dare be autonomous to me now. I think it, okay, before we get reactive about that, though, I think it makes sense. I, I can understand it. I don't like it, but I can understand it. In crisis, in crisis, we need everybody on the same page. We need everybody to be in a common mission. And Dutch is equating that with, we need everybody to feel the same. Dutch saying, you worry because I worry, I think is an attempt for him to basically say to Arthur, don't you think about this too hard. I need you with me. I mean, Dutch just admitted he doesn't know what to do. And I can, I can admire that. I admire that he said he doesn't know what to do instead of having a whole bunch of bravado here. But Arthur showing some frustration to him, saying, what am I, the errand boy now? I just do your bidding. And Dutch goes, nope, we can't have that right now, son. I'm going to need you to take those boundaries and make them more diffuse. I'm going to need us to be one and the same right now because I can't afford to have you think about this. I need you, I need to leverage your blind loyalty to me in the form of us experiencing the same emotions and the same perspective about stuff so that we can get out of here and get this done. On one hand, I can see how that works because it helps us get through a crisis and it helps us get from point A to point B. On the other hand, that loss of autonomy in the time of crisis, I think further perpetuates the fact that any separation of your identity from the group is a threat to the group. And Dutch doesn't know who he is without the group. 
If Dutch doesn't have a group to lead, that man is going to go nuts. And so he's doing everything he can to make sure that the group thinks that they need him and that they're tied to him. I mean, he's pulling some passive leverage here in order to get Arthur activated. So I understand it. I don't necessarily agree with it. I think Dutch could be a lot more sophisticated with how he does it, but I mean, that's kind of my read on it. Yeah, no, it was, Mona. It was absolutely like a parent with a teenage child. It, it absolutely was, but we're in crisis now, right? Dutch, all of a sudden, whew, we're seeing him go tunnel vision again. Like, I'm really, I love what's happening right now because this legitimately is going to give us so much insight into this group. So much insight. It already is. And so the way that we navigate this, we have now seen, we saw Dutch and the group in crisis in the beginning of the game. We saw us lay low and find some comfort and settle down a little bit. And now we're in crisis again. This is, this is going to give us a lot of information. This is where they're going to leverage all that loyalty. If you're not with us right now, you're against us and we can't afford that. Let's go. Ride to Dewberry Creek. So we got to scout this out. All right. Let's go, Charles. So where are we going? Find a new spot to camp. We're packing up and moving on. Again? We have to. Fast. We'd already pushed our luck too far before that mess we just made in Valentine. Ah, uh, that didn't sound good. Uh, Killed a lot of law. Killed a lot of Cornwall's men. Careful. They must know where we are by now. Uh, so, we're heading south? Yeah. Area called Dewberry Creek. Dutch wants us to give it a look. Make sure it's clear and a good place to lie low for a while. I've only known him a few months, but the way he talks, I never thought I'd see him wanting to head south. Right. And I know by now, there ain't no lying low. There's too many of us for that. Yep. And there ain't no way Dutch is gonna just hide away in a cave somewhere. Goes against everything he stands for. That'd be admitting we're nothing more than low-down criminals. Which we are. You don't have to tell me. So where does it end? Where does what end? The moving, the running. Dutch don't see it as running. Call it what you want. I don't know. Before, put enough time and distance. Uh, hang on a second. I think that must be it up ahead, the old dried up creek. Seems very open. Yeah, it does. Ain't sure to be the best in the rain, neither. Well, let's take a look around. What Dutch said to Arthur worked. For Dutch, it worked. Language, again. Notice how Charles is asking for Arthur's opinion. And Arthur keeps saying what Dutch would want. What Dutch would think. Dutch absolutely put Arthur in his place there. And Arthur went along with it. Arthur didn't say what he thinks. When, it, when, when Charles pushed him on it, he goes, I don't know. So, even though we look at this as the outsider, we look at Dutch, what he said to Arthur, we go, oh, yikes, it worked. Arthur's up in his head about how we make this work for Dutch. How has Dutch conceptualized this? He's drawing upon Dutch's approach to this instead of coming up with his own thoughts. I think because when anybody in the group thinks hard about what it is they're doing, they would find that they possibly don't agree with it. And if they don't agree with it, it's going to be perceived as dissent. And so Dutch has gotten everybody in the group to a point where they're trying to placate him and make sure that, he is, that his ideas are coming to fruition. They're not allowing their own ideas to flow. And at any given point in time, Dutch reminds them of that. And it, it, and it all happens in that interaction between Arthur and Charles. What do you think? Well, Dutch would say, 
And I bet you a lot of people in the group would answer it that way. I would agree with that, Mona. Yeah, you've always been loyal, Arthur. Exactly. Also, I'm a little mad that I thought this was going to be farther away than this. I got to stop riding so fast because that dialogue was really good. Hey, I see something over there. You see it? Someone on the ground there. Oh man, this seems like a terrible place. If it rains, this whole place is going to wash out. Why on earth would we set up camp here? All right, what do you got, Charles? He's been shot. Let's be careful out there. Hmm. There's a camp just up ahead. Sure. Let's get ready for business. Any issues? Shoot first, debate second. I'm not gonna shoot for the sake of it. Survival's for the sake of it. Quit talking. Yeah, no kidding. Cause it was very, very open and hard to defend. Absolutely. You see there? Tent and a wagon. Okay, well, let's have a look around and make sure. Yeah, this, we could do better than this. This just doesn't seem like a good place. All right, we got to be nice and quiet here. Where is everybody? Maybe they heard us come. Be careful. And being careful. Put their fire out. So sure about that. Ah. Oh my god. Thank god they didn't shoot. It's okay. It's okay. You can come out of there. You okay? You don't mean no harm. Are you okay? Sprechen Sie Deutsch? It's German? No. Strauss well, does. On. Get out of here. Go. We need the land. Go. Get the hell out of they here. They took our father. Who did? M men. Last night. Where? Where did they take him? They ain't no business of ours. I don't even speak their language. All right, Arthur. as tough and dense as all that. Come on, Arthur. Way to go, Charles. The girl was pointing this way. Way to go, Charles. Put Arthur in his place. This is the, man, this is the influence that, I, I, I hate to keep bringing this up, but like, this is the influence that Dutch has on him. Arthur starts making really weird decisions when he's under the gun with Dutch. Dutch is like, go check this place out. Go do this. I worry, you worry. Blah, 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 blah. And Arthur just becomes this really callous, pointed guy. He's not hes not listening to this lady. He starts to re-engage with the I ain't a good person deal. 
So I'm really good, really glad that Charles put him in his place there and says, you ain't dense enough to be like that. Because he's right. There's no reason for Arthur to be that callous there. There's really not. Other than him to be like thinking about, you know, Dutch said this has to be a certain way. Group's in trouble. I got a boom, boom, boom. So I, this is absolutely an extension of Arthur's role in the group. And again, in crisis, we see him tighten up and become callous. When we relax a little bit, Arthur becomes a little bit more autonomous. He gets a little bit more friendly. He takes on certain side jobs. It's a very, it's very important to look at the difference in people's psyche when certain people are around versus others. And I love that Charles stands, Charles stands up to Arthur here. I have an immense amount of respect for him on that. Let's see if we can pick up a trail. And the, look at that, Charles taking the lead. I love that. That's awesome. There tracks come on i don't see nothing hoof marks this way when we see that john marston's around arthur takes the lead charles is around here charles takes the lead very interesting again like has arthur basically moved into a subordinate role because now we're in crisis and he's got to look to others I just like the difference in process here. All of a sudden, Charles is taking control here and Arthur's going along. Instead of Arthur being the one when John's around that go, or Sean's around and Arthur goes, I got this. I'm going to stand on top of this barrel while the train comes. Yada, yada, yada. It's a very fascinating difference to see what kind of power certain people have when they're with, Mark, when they're with Arthur versus others. What's going on with you? What do you mean? You were just going to send that woman and her children on their way? We're wanted, man. We got Pinkertons braiding down our necks. We should be moving camp, not running off on some wild goose chase. Come on, Arthur. That's not how you are. Well, maybe you don't know me as well as you think you do. Wait a second. Just want to look closer here. Or that self-loathing, huh? I couldn't possibly be a good person here. Okay, looks like they go down this way. So, what happened with those Pinkertons anyway? When you were fishing with Jack? Said they were on to us. Offered me freedom if I turned Dutch here. They picked the wrong man there. We should have moved right then, if you ask me. Wait, just let me make sure this is right. <laughs> they picked the wrong man suggests that there are other people that would have absolutely sold Dutch out. I want to know who that is. I want to know who would have sold Dutch out. I want to know if Charles has enough insight into the group to know that if the Pinkertons had approached anybody else, who would have actually sold Dutch out there? He knows that Arthur wouldn't. I don't know if he would have. But that's a really interesting comment. Right? It wasn't like, oh, yeah, nobody would do that. It was, oh, they picked the wrong person to ask to do that. Huh. Continues along the shore here. So you were saying... Bastards told me they killed Mac. Said it right in front of Jack. Uh, that kid, it's gonna be tough for him. Yeah, but he has more folk looking out for him than most of the rest of us had growing up. John said he was going back to the auction yard to collect the money for those sheep. He'd be a damn idiot going anywhere near that town right now. Uh, he reckoned he'd be able to slip in and out. Oh, well. If it's John's idea, it must be a good one. What is it with you and him? Oh, uh, he disappeared on us for a while. When Jack was real young. A long while. You hear him? He did? And we was family, you know? 
think this is the right way. Give me a second. Okay, so first of all, kudos to Charles for just being curious. We know, all right, so bear with me on this. So we know that Arthur and Mary never worked out because Mary just wouldn't have Arthur. So John had Abigail, I think that's who it is, and his son is Jack. At least that's my understanding of it. I wonder if part of the reason that John leaving the group was so impactful to Arthur, even beyond the you know impact it had on him, is because maybe Arthur envies what John left. Maybe Arthur wishes that he would have had a partner and a child. And is, you know, thinking, man, I would never do that to them. And is, and is judging John for the fact that he left something that he takes for granted that Arthur would absolutely love to have. Because Arthur's, Anger toward John does seem a bit disproportionate. I can understand why he would be mad that he left the group, and I can understand that they were friends and that he considered him family. But there's got to there's there's some kind of personal stake there for Arthur, and I do wonder if maybe that's what it is. There's a cool little bit of insight there. They carry on along this trail. You were saying before you disappeared on me. Guess I still ain't fully forgiven him for that. There it is. Yep. If they care so much for this kid, why is he still traveling with them? It's a good question, Mary. I'm not sure. Other than I guess it's, it's John's kid. Man, we're going a long way for this guy. There's a camp up ahead. Be careful. Take a look. Whoa! Where is this guy? I don't know. But you know something? This is a better camp spot than back there. Much easier to defend. I would agree with that. Completely. Maybe. Oh, shit. Sir? Hey. Oh, shit. This looks like our feather, Charles. Quick. Cut him free and let's get out of here. Vorsicht, Vorsicht! Das ist eine Pfanne, Vorsicht! Oh, it's a trap. Okie dokie. Three coming right at us. You get the hell away from here. Good thing I got my repeater. Oh, nope, that's a shotgun. I guess I don't have my repeater. That sucks. What are we doing? This ain't even our goddamn fight. Charles bringing a bow to a gunfight? Love that. Well, that's them dealt with. You get him untied, and I'll see what they've left behind for us. Machen Sie mich los! It's okay. Getting you out of here. Vielen Dank für Ihre Hilfe. Yeah, okay. Hey, you wait there a second. Charles, go find Dutch. 
Get the caravan to divert here. This spot should work for us. I agree. Yeah, could, don't mind Coconut Man. Coconut Man's not useful. I just turned it off. Yeah, first we start with no bots, and now we have two bots. Hey, don't mind me, sir. I'm just going to loot these fellas that were holding you captive. Also soll ich mitkommen? All right. Come on, sir. Wo bringen Sie mich hin? What the hell did you do to those fellas? Wie bitte? Those men back there, why did they take you? Geld, money. Meiner Familie gehört eine Goldmine. Sie wollen Lösegeld erpressen. How did someone even come up with them words? Sie bringen mich zu meiner Familie? Vielen Dank. Wie haben Sie sie gefunden? Look, I'm sorry, friend. I can barely speak English. There's a, I think, an interesting theory about why somebody like Arthur would get angry at this guy for speaking German. It's very odd to look at another human and not be able to communicate with them. We are so accustomed to using language to engage with people, to, to share meaning, to create understanding, that when you can't do that because of a language barrier, it really makes you feel dumb. And I think the reason a lot of folks, let alone Arthur, get really frustrated at people that don't speak the language, besides some of the maybe racist undertones there, is because they have to feel dumb. And people don't like feeling dumb. People don't like looking at humans and thinking, I should be able to communicate with you and I can't. And so that creates anger and frustration. And you take it out on what you perceive to be the impetus of that frustration, which is the person that's speaking the other language. So it's in some ways a form of personalization of like, I'm an idiot. Because I can't talk to this person. But I don't believe I'm an idiot, so they're an idiot. They're, they're, it is them that are bad because they don't speak my language, and I'm going to make that their problem because I don't want to sit with the fact that like I feel dumb when I don't know your language. Do you think Arthur would be capable of running the gang by himself, or does Dutch have this clause in Arthur too deep? I think Arthur could run the group if he wanted to, but I don't even know that he would want to. Some people can pull the <laughs> bringing a bow to a gunfight. World War II, there was a British military guy who went to war with a longbow and a broadsword. Good for him, man. Crap. Yeah. It's a very helpless experience to be around a lot of people who don't speak the language you speak. It really is. It makes me anxious. It's why I never studied abroad. 
and if I did study abroad, I'd want to go somewhere where people speak English. It's a very helpless feeling to not be able to communicate with folks. There they are. Dem Herrgott sei Dank. Schatz! Ich hab gedacht, du seist tot. Beinahe wärst du gewesen. Meine Lieblinge, meine Herz allerliebst. <lacht> oh, wie wunderbar. Oh. Sie sind ein großer Mann. Ja. Ein großer Mann. Ja, wirklich. Es ist ein Segen, dass Nein. wir sie getroffen haben. Come on, get out of here. This place ain't safe. Get out of here! Ja, ja, Bamble. alles klar. Bamble. Oh uh, my God, Arthur. Ich hab was für Sie. Einen Moment. Uh, um, Dankeschön. Thank you. Vielen Dank, herzlichen Dank. A gold bar? Yeah. What? That dude just handed me a gold bar. Oh my god. You were right. Oh, this place. Oh, it'll be perfect for us. Hello, Arthur. Dutch. <clears throat> Miss Grimshaw, Mr. Pearson, put everyone to work. Make this place a home. Well, I don't know where the hell we are, but we are going to make the best of it. Chapter 3, Clemens Point. All right. So, what do you think of this place? Not bad. Nice to be by the water. Yeah, it'll do for now. I agree. We can go fishing. Are you talking about how people speak louder when they don't feel heard during Detroit Become Human? Is that what you would apply when he was trying to talk to Andreas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see that all the time. When, when people speak to other people who don't uh, share the same language, they will speak slower and louder, and that doesn't do anything. Like, speaking louder in English to those people isn't going to make them magically understand English. But that's what we do. It's a very innate, deep-down thing that, like, we believe when we aren't being heard, it must just be because we're not loud enough. And we think if we yell it, that's going to somehow register. It's like, it's hilarious. You, you watch the smartest people in the world, they do that. You just, you just passively do it. <laughs> and, and it's funny to watch because like, it's totally understandable why it happens. It's just such a, uh, it's just such a like innate, simple thing. And we, we all do it. And it's just ridiculous because language is so advanced. It's not as easy as just be louder. Oh, man. How often do you read the journal? I read it whenever I get an update. Morning, I'm just talking Arthur. to folks for a minute. So, what do you think of the place? Seems fine. For now. Yep. Should buy us a bit of time, I hope. For now. I mean, look at everybody. Everybody knows. This ain't a permanent fixture. Nobody ever looks at this stuff and goes, why don't we just permanently settle here? We'll start ourselves a town. Nope. We know that this is going to be a temporary deal. world is changing and I'm not making much sense am I <laughs> no but somehow you've summarized how I feel it, it seems awful and then it seems the same as always and then it, it seems like there's just no other way and I, I just Listen, 
We got out of worse situations than this. Done plenty of bad things that we've all forgotten about. <sighs> Don't take Dutch's patter about redemption too seriously. We're doomed. Just like every other creature on this rock. But unlike them, we'll go down fighting. Is that what you believe? I don't know, son. I don't know what I believe. Apart from wishing I wasn't gonna find out sooner than I'd like. <sighs> what well, do you think, Arthur? I don't do too much thinking, Jose. Killing's more my thing. I don't believe that for a second. I just love Arthur's investment in being a certain way when it's just absolutely not how he is. All right, so Hosea thinks we're doomed. He's kind of the foil for, for Dutch. Yep, exactly, DL. Yeah, it just that doesn't work. Everything okay? Yeah. Apart from Mrs. Adler's constant complaining. Well... <laughs> Can't do much about that. Anyway, I won't disturb you. What a beautiful morning. You all right, Bill? Can't believe we're running away from Cornwall. What's happened to us? It was time to move. All right, well, I should be getting on. All right. Bill wants to fight. I could understand that. Good night, Tech. And Skog. All right. Um, horseshoe overlook. Oh, that's cool. He paint. He Drew a picture of Dutch? That's badass. Clemens Point is deep within as opposed to this conflict good. Wait, what? What did I miss? All right, is deep within as opposed to this conflict between good and evil that rages within me. If only we had fled west out of Blackwater, we could be free now, out where we belong beyond civilization with the savages and the animals. Here, we won't ever be at home. Oh, different chapters. Okay, now I understand. All right, that's weird. Okay. More problems have befallen us. More running. Leviticus Cornwall, oil, sugar, rail, and greed merchant whom we robbed a while back had us ambushed in Valentine. Seems he has added to the price on our heads. We shoot our way out of town and narrowly escaped with our lives. The only amusing aspect of the horror was Air Strauss getting grazed and acting like he... God damn it. And acting like he was preparing for a short trip down to hell. After this, we fled the country and headed even further south and east, camping by a lake. This is pretty much new country for me. Charles and I saved a family of Germans who were in the process of getting themselves killed. He's a better man than me. He does not need to think to be good. It comes naturally to him. Like right is deep within as opposed to this conflict between good and evil that rages within me. Only we had fled west. Okay, so. Um. That's really. Huh. So Charles doesn't have to think about being good. I have to think about being good. There's some admiration in there. 
Um, he admires the fact that he perceives Charles to be innately good, that that's something that comes to him. Which I think is a little bit unfair to Charles. I don't think Charles just defaults to good. I don't think anybody really... I think it takes thought to determine how you want to move through the world. Like, if you if you're if you're a person that believes that it's it's up to predetermined traits about yourself, and you box yourself into this idea that this is just who I am. I'm just a person that reacts to the environment instead of being thoughtful about the influence you have over it. That is going to contribute to some problems. Like, I'm sure Charles thinks about it too. Arthur thinks about it. Dutch thinks about it. They're all thinking about it. All of us have the potential to be more intentional about how we interact with people, what we pay attention to, the decisions we make, etc. If you chalk all of that up to just, well, this is just who I am and this fits my profile and I just, I have to do this because I'm a bad person, so ah. The reason you don't have to think about it is because you've so ingrained in yourself these patterns of thought and conceptualization of self and you can change that at any point you can make that effort to go in a different direction and so i like that arthur's looking at this as like okay so i have this thing that's going on in between like inside of me this good versus evil well how does he define those things what decisions does he see as going in a direction that he wants to go in and then he's, he's going to have all of the his, how he belongs in this group and, and some of the group anxiety and narratives that are going to swoop in and are either going to be for or counter to what it is that he chooses. But remember, autonomy is the antithesis to this group dynamic. So as long as Arthur thinks about these things, the more in trouble he is in with the group. I mean, it's just, it's a lot going on cognitively for him, but really the core of this is like, you can be intentional about how you move through the world. And, and I think everybody here is. And if he just chalks up, oh, well, Charles is good because that's just how he is. That's not fair to Charles and it's not fair to him. Everybody's putting the same effort in. What do you think about the part where he says they should be in the Wild West and the savages and animals? Does he think they're subhuman and they're criminals? Yeah, no, I absolutely do. I mean, his default is to think that he's crappy, that he sucks, that he's some kind of savage, that he's thoughtless, right? That's exactly what Arthur thinks about himself. All right, so since I messed this up so badly... Oh my God, there's so much of this journal I've missed. All right, we're going to read the journal here. I didn't realize that I screwed this up so badly. I bought this new journal after the last one got destroyed in that fire all those months ago, whenever it was. I haven't written or drawn much in the past few months, but I was missing it more than I thought I would. Finally, near a store. So here I am, I guess. After all that business up north and the fire... We spent a few months in the wilderness, traveling down from the northern gri grizzlies. Stuck mostly in the western foothills of the mountains during the worst of the winter. Food was easy to find and life was good. Dutch had a lead for some land and we were going to buy, but the land did not match up to his criteria or he got spooked. We were being watched by the law and that somebody knew who he was and we never bought it and we were wondering still. We picked up a couple of folk in the Grizzlies. Jenny, a sweet young girl we met abandoned on the roadside, and Micah, an outlaw Dutch met in a bar in a barn or in a bar someplace. Dutch seems very taken with Micah, who is pretty hot headed, argumentative, and full of himself. Jose and I are less sure. Guess we shall see. Eventually, we came out of the wilderness and are now holed up outside of Blackwater. Although sometimes I stay in town hunting for opportunities, I might be on to, I might be on to something. We got plenty of money. The trail we took was so torturous and slow, nobody could have followed us south and east or figured out where we was heading. We was thinking about California, but then Dutch and Hosea brought us down to Blackwater. Blackwater has apparently grown a whole lot since any of them was last here. 
I was told to expect little more than a trading post. But the place is growing fast, and it's almost a small city. The town seems to be riddled with corruption, but there's a cert there's certainly plenty of money here. It's good to be sleeping in a bed from time to time and living a more civilized life after so long under canvas, but I do not particularly like being this near a town. We are living here, camping outside town mostly, hidden in plain sight, I guess. Life seems pretty easy. Abigail and Marston keep arguing. I wonder why exactly he came back. He cannot seem to decide if he wants to be a father to that boy or to that boy of his or not. The arguing is exhausting. I hear talk of a man sounded like Trelawney, but we haven't seen him for many months. Jose and I are onto something, something pretty big. Might be a lot of cash coming in to do with a real estate scam Hosea thinks he might have discovered. I'm not sure yet. The perfect crime, we think. One where we rob crooks. We're being real careful. It's fun working with Jose again. The man's an artist of nonsense. Even if nothing comes of it, we're having an amusing enough time. <laughs> it's good to be running scams again. Hosea's a born huckster. He's getting anxious, worried that by lingering in town, we're going to bring undue attention to on ourselves. But Dutch thinks he's also onto something big. His word, not mine. Bank money being brought in by boat, apparently. So for now, we're working on both things and seeing what happens. Plan is to flee west into the deepest country someplace if we can. Micah and Dutch are planning to rob the ferry in town. They think it's laden with riches, cash coming in for the banks, coming in by boat. For once, I'm not getting involved in the job. Jose and I are too taken up with our business, which I believe could go very well. And Dutch seems confident that with the group assembled, all will be okay. Plan is for them to carry out the job, then flee into the wilderness out to the west. The next day, Jose and I carry out our scam and join them. Dutch seems happy and excited talking again about California. He's also talking about a lot of other places. We've been running for weeks. I mean running more than usual. The job they was taking in Blackwater robbing that ferry, it turned into a disaster. Young Jenny got killed, poor thing. While Sean and Mac both got arrested or killed, nobody seems sure which. Dutch shot a girl. I'm not too sure if by accident or design, and seems like it might have been a setup. We took to the hills in an almighty scramble, leaving money and most of our things behind. Then, as we were fleeing east over the Grizzlies, an almighty storm hit us. Davy Callender, who got shot in the gut on the raid, passed away. It was brutal to watch. And the rest of us nearly froze, but we found shelter and have been resting here in some old abandoned mining town while we await the thaw. Hardly the spring I'd been hoping for. Jose and I had been planning a robbery of our own in Blackwater, but I guess that's been abandoned along with most of what I own. I'm profoundly concerned as to what happens next. Once we leave this place or the law finds us cowering up here found a girl well a woman i should say her husband had been murdered by some of the como driscoll's boys nasty business seems como driscoll had the same ideas as us he's been hiding up here scouting out a train he wanted to rob bumped into some of his boys at some format at some at some farmstead they was robbing Found that poor woman whose husband they'd murdered, and she's now riding with us, as she ain't got no place better to be. Then Dutch being Dutch, and his hatred for Colm being just as powerful as ever it was, a whole bunch of us went to pay him a visit in his camp, but he escaped. We grabbed one of his boys. Poor bastard ain't spoken yet. He will once we freeze him a little. Then set Bill on him. Been a bad few weeks, but we're mostly still alive. Dutch being Dutch, he's busy making plans and figuring out just how we're going to get, how we're going to survive. 
And Dutch being Dutch, those plans involves robbery and dreams. Finally a thaw in this god-awful weather. We got off the mountain and rode east into some pretty enough country called the Heartlands. Ain't been this far east in many a year. Hosea seems to know the country a little. Ain't been much of a spring. Now hold up at a place called Horseshoe Overlook, outside of some dumpy little cattle town named Valentine. Dutch seems a little better. His eyes are sparkling once more, and I can see he's thinking a little clearer. I think we all feel a little happiness in spite of Blackwater and that whole mess. <laughs> Headed out into Valentine with Uncle and the girls. Girls went scouting at work while Uncle and I had a few drinks and he explained more of his theories on existence. And barefaced lies about his past. Things took a strange turn. Some fella seemed to recognize me or us from Blackwater. Guess we had been holed up there so long while Jose and I scouted the job. It never was. I chased the bastard. And he nearly fell off a, ch off a cliff. I spared him and he gave me an ink pen. I hope I won't regret my leniency, but I reckon he got the scare of his life. Jimmy Brooks was his name. Met some old drunken Valentine, claimed he was a short, uh, a shootist. Seemed more like a clown. Some poor fool was writing a book about him or trying to, trying to, or trying to. Levin was the name of the writer. Jim Calloway was the killer. Apparently, Levin needs more information. Asked me to find a few folk who have spent more time in publicity than me and knew old Tim back or knew old Jim back when he was a real killer. Their names are Emmett Granger, Flacco Hernandez, Billy Midnight, and Black Bell. Sound like a troop of clowns. We shall see what kinds of people those who want to be famous murderers is. My hopes are not too high. Tom old Driscoll skipped through our fingers once more, and I saw my own life slip through mine. That gentle buffoon we kidnapped up in the mountains took us to a cabin. We were planning to kill Colm, but he had just gone elsewhere. We shot a bunch of his boys, and one was about to end my life when Kieran... Saw it when Kieran shot him. This feud bled out from Dutch and Cole's mutual hatred into a loathing that permeates all of us and all of them. Still, I found quite a shotgun in the cabin. Air Strauss is back lending money, and I'm back collecting it. Work mostly revolves around me and shame. The work mostly revolts in me and shames me. Somehow, rob, somehow robbing people honestly with a gun and fist is less repellent than robbing them fully in accordance with the law. It'll be the unusual sort of just, oh my god, it'll be the usual sort of disparate disparados. Sick farmers, pregnant maids, lovesick young men, and other dupes desperate enough and stupid enough to take Strauss's terms. A usurer's life may be a comfortable one, but it is foul work. I went to call in alone, some farmer, local do-gooder. I think I've seen him in Valentine before when I was fighting that big fella. He begged and coughed and sputtered and I beat him half to death. Such is life, such is the world. His boy looked at me while like I was the devil and perhaps for him I was. The whole thing confused me. Maybe that's wrong. The whole thing revolted me, my part. These sad, desperate bastards, their silly expectations of life and their paltry reality. The unkindness of existence. I can handle that just fine. But I do not love it, nor those who try to make things otherwise, I guess. When drinking with young Lenny, <laughs> thanks to my own peculiar genius for trouble when drunk, the evening did not go quite according to plan, but somehow neither of us got killed or arrested for murder, despite my best efforts in that regard. Somehow I don't imagine that the saloon owner in Valentine likes me very much after the mayhem I've caused there. Met an idiot hunting for treasure. Bought me a map off him. Wonder if I'll find anything. 
Took a day off and went hunting with Hosea. He really seems to be getting his strength back a bunch, although he was lucky to not die as a big bear he'd been on turned on us. I thought when we was stuck up in the mountains that the cold and misery would kill him, and we'd bury him like we buried Jenny and Davy. He pulled through, and he'll live a while yet. I love Dutch like a father, but in many ways, I love Hosea even more. He's kind and fair like a human being. Dutch is something else. This bear was also something else. Size of a goddamn hotel. It was and mean with it. Got into some god-awful fight in the town saloon. Bill started it. He's wound so tight about something, I reckon he'll start hitting himself soon enough. I was stopping for beating some big yokel to death by a local do-gooder. I could not tell if this made me pleased or real angry. The local crowd seemed to want to see blood, however. Afterwards, D Dutch accosted me with old Josiah Trelawney, back in quite as slippery and confusing as ever. He'll come and go again, no doubt, and leave none of us any of the wiser as to who or what he is. Trelawney told us that Sean had not been killed in Blackwater, but was a prisoner there, held by scalp hunters awaiting payment. Charles Smith, Javier, and I met in Blackwater and rescued that loudmouth maniac. Before we'd even cut him free from the tree, he was mouthing off at us. Javier and Black said Blackwater is an impossible situation, and I guess I had better forget about all that money. All them years wasted earning that stuff. Guess I'll never quite know what happened. But the upshot is, we're on the run, and known to more folk in the authority than we would like. I can't believe I missed all this. Thank God y'all told me that I was changing chapters instead of pages. Good Lord, I'm going to read these more regularly now. Took young Jack out fishing as a favor to Abigail. Many years ago, she fell so hard for that fool Marston, perhaps I should have married her. I think part of me has always thought that, yet God damn you, Mary. Yeah, there we go. Jack's a good boy, a dreamer. A boy with a mama who loves him. Wonder if he'll ever find what we seek. Peace and truth away from all this nonsense and lies. If that's what we still seek, not that that's a new development. Not sure I know myself anymore. Yo. Okay, so that adds even more to his hatred for Marston. Because now we have to take into account Dutch's past. Dutch was picked up. Or not Dutch. Uh, Arthur was picked up by Dutch when he was a teenager. And I don't know all the story about Arthur's parents and whatnot. But it might be that some of Arthur's childhood anger toward his caretakers comes out in the way that he looks at Marston. Because Marston leaving puts Abigail and Jack in danger. And perhaps if Abigail doesn't survive, then Jack is in the exact same position that Arthur would have been in as a kid. And perhaps Arthur doesn't want that for Jack. So not only does he see, you know, Marston is not good for Abigail or Jack, he sees himself in Jack. And so it's a lot harder to forgive Marston for leaving and putting them in danger because in a lot of ways that would mean that Dutch or that Arthur would have to forgive maybe his own parents for whatever they did to put him in the circumstances that he was in. And that gets really difficult really fast. Because that's the thing. When you have a parallel process like that, there's always in the back of your mind, there's the real difficult one. Like when people have a hard time forgiving certain folks for the things they've done, or they hold grudges longer than it seems like they should reasonably hold them, it's often because they equate forgiving those people with forgiving the formative dynamic that created that hostility toward the present dynamic. So if you, in your present life, you find that you're holding on to something a little bit more than you otherwise would, you have to ask yourself, am I holding on to this because I'm holding on to a formative experience? Am I equating this with forgiving that? If I forgive John... Is If you're Arthur, if I forgive John for the fact that he left Abigail and Jack, does that mean I have to forgive my parents for leaving me and putting me in a position where I had to join this group and I've had to ride with them and now formulate myself as being a bad person? Maybe not only because I was abandoned as a kid, but because this group is basically built around what I consider to be bad. 
that's, I mean. That gets intense. <laughs> really fast. Oh, baby. All right, let's keep reading. I'm enjoying this a lot. Sometimes I'm not sure Dutch does. As we fished, a couple of Pinkerton agents appeared. Milton was one of them. I forgot the other fellow's name. They knew all about me. That's a new turn of events. Apparently, there's 5,000 on my head alone. After Blackwater, or maybe before, it seems we may be in real trouble. I just don't know. Dutch don't seem too worried, but I'm beginning to have some doubts as to the wisdom and his indifference. That's a hell of a sentence. Met a woman and killed a John. Claimed it was an accident. I helped her get rid of the body. Wonder if she was quite as innocent as she claimed. Met a strange guy. Thought he was a prophet. Blind. Jose and I went robbing, just like in the old days. A father and son pair of clowns at some farmhouse. Stole a wagon, sold it to some rat Jose had met at some place called the Emerald Ranch. What goes on there, I cannot tell, but this little purchaser of stolen goods had us go rob his own family. Even by my standards, that was low. But the father and son we robbed was proof that even God makes mistakes sometimes. I snuck in at night and we robbed the loathsome bastards blind. <laughs> I just wanted to say I'm so happy for your deep diving into these characters because not many people do, and by doing so, it will make the game's experience that much better. I hope you enjoyed as much. I am enjoying it immensely, Ethan. Yeah, this is a lot of the context that I've been wanting. I've seen dozens of people play this game, but this might be the most insightful playthrough yet. Well, thank you, James. Arthur's mother died to illness. His father was hung for being an outlaw, all when Arthur was very young. I hope that helps. Okay, well, there we go. So, yeah, so his father was hung for being an outlaw. Forgiving John means forgiving his father. Also, the harder it is for a person to forgive themselves for their own past decisions, the more guilt, shame, self-loathing attached to that, the harder it is for them to forgive others. Yes, that certainly can be the case as well. This is good stuff, man. More problems have befallen us. More running. Leviticus Cornwall. All right, so there it is. So now we're back to where we, uh, where we were. We caught up. All right, we're caught up. Chat, Desperados. Did I say Desperado? I did say Desperado, didn't I? Desperados. Jesus. My bad. Desperados. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. Former Fenian Raider killed in gun battle. After decades escaping justice, the law finally caught up with Darag McGuire. Mr. McGuire was a well-known Fenian and proponent of Irish independence who had attacked the empire and all it stands for on two continents. Government agents who had pursued him for many years once found the traitor at a farmhouse outside of Clifton in, in Connemara, but he eluded them. A desperate manhunt ensued and it was discovered Mr. McGuire had fled to America. Finally, Mr. McGuire was found lodging in a rooming house in Boston, Massachusetts. There, the men bravely engaged in a gun battle with the traitor who was killed in action. Reports from family members that he was murdered in his sleep were denied by other witnesses as little more than further Fenian propaganda. Tonight, all law-abiding citizens in Ireland and across the empire will sleep easier in their beds. As long ago as 1860, Mr. McGuire was implicated in the so-called Fenian uprising that swept through Galway, burning three large properties and leaving many dead. To escape capture, he fled to Canada, where he was part of a Fenian raid near the Great Fall of Niagara. It left eight people dead. Later, he returned to Ireland, despite being wanted for something, became a prominent figure politics and a battle his ilk waged against the, arist the aristocracy of Ireland. Move your thumb. Okay, there we go. Here we go. All right. As long ago as 1860, Mr. McGuire was implicated in the so-called Fenian uprising that swept through Galway, burning three large properties and leaving many dead. To escape capture, he fled to Canada, where he was part of the Fenian raid near the Great Fall of Niagara that left eight people dead. 
Later, he returned to Ireland, where despite being wanted for murder, became a prominent figure in Republican politics. In a battle that he and his ilk waged against the parasitic aristocracy of Ireland, whether English or Irish, a personal war against the natural order of things that damaged landowners, ruined farmers, and disrupted the peaceful propagation of life as it is meant to be lived. Now, after decades of disruption and treason, justice caught up with Mr. McGuire. The way you said it the first time makes it sound like a Pokemon. Yeah, I could see that. What do you think is the best course of action for getting over things you regret doing in the past? You got to be kind to yourself and look at look at the context for it. So one of the things that happens with past regrets is people take their hindsight sensibilities and apply it to what they did. And that's okay. You can learn from the things you did. But here's the thing. No matter how much you want to revisit things you did in your life, in your past, you cannot change what you did. We cannot change the past. Only thing we can do from learn is learn from it. And the thing is, whatever decisions you made in the past, you likely made for a reason. And it made sense at the time. And with hindsight, maybe you look at it and you go, ooh, I shouldn't have said that or I shouldn't have done that. But then you use that to say, well, how do I want to interact in the future? Being oh, super harsh on yourself for things that you've done in the past and being really judgmental to the point of self-loathing isn't really going to do you any good in terms of the decisions you're going to make in the future. In fact, if you use the past to create a schema for yourself that says you're a bad person, you actually may bias yourself into continuing to make bad decisions instead of being thoughtful about it. And saying, you know what? I've done things in the past that I regret. I want to do it differently, and I'm going to take an active role in my life and do those things differently and figure out what that means for me. Sitting there and just ruminating on the past and judging yourself harshly for it really doesn't do you any good. So you got to focus on what you want to do in the future and the frame that you want to take and reminding yourself that what you did made sense at the time and it doesn't have to make sense now. Considering how many people you yourself have murdered as Arthur in this game, do you think he's a good person or a bad person? I hate that idea. I don't like, I absolutely despise the idea of putting people into this is a bad person, this is a good person. People are complicated. When we put people into boxes and say they're either good or bad, all we're doing is biasing the way that we're going to view anything they do. If we say that Arthur's a bad person and then he goes off and does a good deed, we are then going to say, well, he's only doing that because it stands for personal gain and he's probably got some sort of nefarious alternative agenda that he's operating off of instead of giving him a chance. I just think when we write people off as good or bad, it doesn't do anybody any good. It doesn't do that person any good. It doesn't do us any good. It's an oversimplification. Arthur is a complicated man. He does think it's, there's a difference between who you are and what you do. Arthur is a complicated person that at times does good things and at times does bad things. He tends to tell himself that he's a bad person, so he gives more energy to the times that he does bad things and he doubts when he does good things. But that doesn't make him a bad person, per se. I don't like that terminology. It's also why I, d I dislike when games make it a very binary thing of whether you do good or bad. I like that this is on a, a, a spectrum. The Pinkertons are finally gonna kill us? <sighs> Perhaps. I'm so worried. Understandable, Reverend. You're saying there's no good or bad, just complex people. Yes, that is exactly what I'm saying. Black and white thinking is not useful. It's easier, but it's not useful. What's up, Brian? Also, I just want to say, because I haven't said this yet tonight, thank you all for being here. I really appreciate you spending time with me. If you're here live, it means so much to me that you come out and watch and interact with me and chat. I love the questions. I love the comments. I love reading what you all have to say. Thank you so much for taking the time, especially on a Saturday night, to hang out with me. It's really cool of you to do. If you're currently watching the VOD, I want to let you know that I appreciate you as well. Thank you for supporting the channel by watching my videos. 
Uh, I really hope that you enjoy this. I hope if you're watch if you're watching the live rerun, I hope you're enjoying watching chat. If you're watching the curated VOD, thank you so much for jumping into the playlist and watching it. Um, it's really great to have you all here. If you haven't already, please take a second to like the video, hit the thumbs up. It's super easy to do. You just click it. It makes a big difference for the for the stream. Also, um, again, if you're interested in supporting the stream financially, there are memberships available at different tiers. It all goes towards supporting the stream and tips are also appreciated. I'll never put the stream behind a paywall, but I do appreciate those of you that um, that do memberships. And if you do this while you're off, while I'm offline and don't have a chance to thank you for it, thank you for being a member of the channel. Uh, and I'm sorry I haven't had a chance to say it to you live. So but thank you all for being here. I really appreciate you spending the time. I hope you enjoy this run as much as I'm enjoying playing it. This has been a ton of fun. To be warm. Sure. Thank you, Cavoozle. You know me, I never did much thinking. I know you like to hide behind the angry moron act, but it's a thin enough veneer. If you say so. <laughs> Time to start thinking, Arthur. Before it's too late. I like that. And, and now, based on what we read in the journal... I think Arthur's really going to take that to heart because he's got a ton of respect for Hosea. What's wrong with you, Mr. Morgan? How'd you mean? You're stuck in camp all the time. You used to be such a man of action. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, well, let's talk more later. Okay. I think it's time we play a little poker with the boys. Playing poker. Why not? Let's go, chat. Boy, I can just about feel my father's eyes on the back of my head for playing this. I see any one of you fellers cheat, I'll take a pinky off him. All right. What do we got here? We got Ace Eight suited. Let's go. Uh. I'll raise it. Let's see what everybody's at. I know. It ain't too exciting. Oh, you ain't lulling me uh, into that. Come on. See ya. Well, this'll do. If you had to subscribe yourself to any field of philosophy where the question, how should people find meaning in their life, what would you choose? This game always kind of pushed me to absurdism. This may surprise you all. I am, uh... Nihilism. Mind the time, man. May surprise you, but nihilism is uh, the most philosophically interesting to me. All right, I'll call it two cents. Man, we got a big pot here. Give me diamonds. Give me diamonds. We paired the five. Fine. 11 cents. Gut shot straight draw. Pair of fives. I'll call the 11 I'll cents. I'll call. Ugh. All right, just this. Damn. I didn't pair the fives. What the? F I thought I had ace five. I didn't pair the five. What a stupid bet. I'm out. Wow. No. I'm going easy. Oops. Didn't even know what my cards were. Also, after watching dozens of playthroughs, you're maybe the second that knows how to play poker. <laughs> Oops. I was hoping you had a monster at least. Uh, it's the oh. second one, Celestial. Is all this money? Can you explain what that means for those of us that are out of the loop? So nihilism, nihilism is the idea that nothing matters, that nothing actually has any meaning, that we're all just here, and that humans are meaning-making machines just because that's what we're designed to do, but that this none of us actually matters. I find that to be an interesting philosophy. 
there's two ways that people go with nihilism. First is nothing matters and that sucks. And I just, and I hate this. And then there's the nothing matters. So I might as well just do what I can in the moment and live my life the way as best to my ability. That's more the way that I go. But it's kind of like, I don't know. I just, I think it's a really interesting idea because I think it frees us of the idea that there's something beyond us that we don't understand that we have to live in reference to. When in reality, like none of us knows, none of us knows what this is all about. So does it matter? Who knows? But that's kind of the idea behind nihilism. Nothing matters. Some people really hate that perspective. All right, King Three, I'll go in for a cent. Come on, ain't that much to think about. Here. Show me. God, what are we doing, man? Dude, Char or, uh, Lenny is, uh, Lenny's aggressive, man. King Three, two cents, or four cents to call? All right. Give me a king on the flop here. All right, so we pair the three, king kicker, no flush on the board. All right, um, come on, Lenny. Put your money where your mouth is, buddy. Yeah, I know, pretty pathetic. Damn. All right, what you got? All right, Lenny's out, she's in. You got Miss Grimshaw. Ugh. Pair of threes with a king kicker. All right, let's see if we can push her out. Ten cents. There. Ha! Men can't laugh for shit. Oh Jesus Christ! All right, is she sitting on a straight draw? A jack. All right, let's check. Uh, it. Here's this. <laughs> the hell is that? Oh man. Oh, I can't do it. Shit. Can't do it. Mm, don't mind if I do. Can't do it. I'll be glad to leave this camp if I'm honest. <laughs> well, we ain't doing so hot here. You never learned to play a game till you played it for bread. Look at you people. Y'all know damn well I taught you everything you know about cards. All right. Give me something good. What do I got? Four, three? Oh, God. All right, I'll call the two cents, but if anybody raises, I'm out. Well, this will Lenny's do. out. Miss Grimshaw raises. Yep, see you later, Miss Grimshaw. Okay. Uh -huh. You bought yourself All the right. pot there. Well, thank you, James. I'm glad you're here. Well, this is a slaw. Well, I think Tilly wanted to play dominoes, if that's more your pace. You know what will cheer you up? Memes on Discord. We got King. You got this, big dumb moron. Oh, man, King, that's so good. That's so good. Sure. That's so good. All right, 6-9 yes, right. suited. I'll check that. I'll check. Give me clubs. All right, we paired the six. All right, so I'll talk through this as best I can. All right, so I got a pair of six. The community cards here are everybody's. I got my two. So I just paired my six, but that's the lowest card on the board. If either of these two is holding a queen or an eight, they got me beat right now. Um, now there's a diamond flush draw potentially available here. Um, I'm the first one to bet. Now, I paired the six, so I'm going to show that I have a pair by betting here because maybe if they don't have anything, it'll right. get them out, but I don't have a strong position. Let's so if I bet this, now I'm going to get an idea where they are. So Lenny calls it six cents. Miss Grimshaw calls it six cents. So they're sitting on something. Okay, so there's a four. So now we have what's called a diamond. We have a diamond flush draw that's really on the board. If one of them has two diamonds in their hand, they have what's called a flush. 
Uh, I'm gonna check this and see how they play it. Check, check. All right. And then a 10 comes out. So now there's Not still... Three. Again, one of them has to have a pair of diamonds. Now, I can play this hard. I'm gonna go at Lenny here because I have a pair of six. Let's go 12 cents. There we go. Because they both checked around on the last oh, one. Oh, you must have a really good hand. All right, so he called. Well, I'm not here to sit on my hands. Miss Grimshaw raises. Of course she does. She has to have either slow played the queen or she's sitting on a flush. I got to damn it. I got to pull out. Oh, no. Holding like your damn blue. I'll raise. Wow, and he re-raised. Here we go. Wow. Good thing I got out on a pair of sixes. There. Yeah, Don't she had queens and eights. <laughs> Jesus. Shit, I knew it. Wow. Oh, bad. So we're going heads up with Miss Grimshaw. <laughs> Thank God I didn't bluff that. I can't believe she was sitting on two pair. Ah, you boys regret inviting me yet? All right, so Glenny, Glenny well. just bought back in. Holy shit, man. Let's see what each of us is made of. On the inside, I mean. All right, nine three suited, not super great, but I'll call one see cent. You. Come on, check for me, Lenny. Hmm. Check. All right, come on. All right, four six ten. So we got a diamond on the board, which is nice. No pair. Gut shot, straight draw. Um, I'll check no. it. Let's see what they got. Miss Grimshaw checks. All right, give me a diamond. Son of a bitch. We got nothing. We're going to just check this out. <laughs> what the hell are you waiting for? Bad. Yeah, nope, Here. I'm out. I'm out. Damn it. Ain't got nothing. I don't have enough. I don't. I can't. I can't throw my weight around the table here with the low stack. Ace on the river. All right. I will. Talk all you want. Don't change a thing. Damn, Miss Grimshaw is just like stacked. All right. Come on, Arthur. What do you got? King eight? All right, I'll take king eight. That's not a bad hand to go in on. I'm going to see you. Nah. Lenny's Here's out. Miss Grimshaw going to raise? Of course she is. All right, I'll call that raise. This is decent enough. Hey! No. Oh, I have a king. What am I doing here? What am I doing here? And I got a flush draw, though. I got a flush draw. Let's slow play this. Five cents. Not just a little wager. Now she's out. All right, whatever. I bought the pot. Okay. That's as it should be. Come here. All right, so on the river is the fifth card. So you have the first three cards that come out. It's called the flop. You have the fourth card that comes out. It's called the turn. Fifth card's called the river. All good so when we say I hit that on the river, it means Sorry the fifth card that. hit it. So the flop is the first three that come out. Yeah, feel free to ask poker questions if you want. Uh, five four off suit. Mm -mm. Now, don't get coy on me. She calls. I'll check. Check. Check means you don't bet anything. All right, seven nine king, oh, four five six. Eh, I mean, I'll check. <clears throat> Another heart out. This'll do. I have a heart. Oh my god, what is she betting? Two cents. I will pay two cents to see if I get a heart. Uh, I'll see you. Give me a heart, baby. Give me that flush. Oh, paired the four. Watch her re-raise this. Nah, I'll. Uh-uh. All right, here. 
We've got Seven Ace High. Hey! Oh, you didn't deserve that one bit. Sure didn't, yeah. but hit the four on the river there. That's good. We're building the stack back up, chat. I got eight cents there. Oh, getting stuck in a rut here. Oh, I'm glad I ain't you right now. I'm still low stack, though. All right, come on, baby. Give you me something good. This, you know? Give me For something no good. Place. Queen 8 suited. I'll take that. Grimshaw is out. I'll call the one cent. What you so scared of? Check. Come on. 246. Absolute garbage. What do you got, Lenny? I'm going to play slow. Oh, you big blouse. Mm hmm Raise. He raised five cents. I really shouldn't play this. I can't be waiting for a queen or an eight. All right, one more card. Okay. One more card. I'll pay five cents for it. Hit the ace. I don't think... You just like to watch people play poker, huh? Yeah. Ah, crap. Ugh. You're betting that you have the best hand. So, uh, there are there are different hands have different odds of coming out. The lower the odds of having a hand, the more powerful it is. All right. Here's the corner. So, you are but the people around the table don't know what cards you're holding. So the the nice the cool thing about poker is that it's like very psychological because you can act as if you have a good hand even if you don't. But the way you bet is the most important part of poker because you give a lot away. You say a lot through how you bet things. So, okay, I got ace four here. So I could I could raise with the ace, which is going to say, it's basically going to signal to the table, I've got some. So if I raise this yeah, five cents, I, I have to make them put their money where their mouth is. So Lenny's saying, yep, I got a hand that's worth five cents to play. Miss Grimshaw says... I'm going to actually raise you another four cents. I'm going to re-raise her all in. I reckon I'll go all in. Well, shit. Hey, Lenny oh, out. Need me to hold your hand. And Miss Grimshaw's going to call. All right. Throw them on the table. Here okay. we go. Here it is. What's she got? Pocket pair? Too impressive. Pair of sevens. Of course she oh, does. Sitting pretty there, huh? Come on. Give me an ace. Give me an ace. Hmm. Oh! Is this good? Come on, give me a 10. Or am I bluffing? No! No! Oh, she had the pocket pair. Oh, I had the straight draw too. Ooh, you must be All right, now. all right, another dollar. I'll throw in another dollar. This is my last dollar though. This is my last dollar. All right, we got 10-4. Real crappy, but I'm on the blind, so if they both call, I'll check. Yep, I'll check. Check, I think. All right, three, five, eight. It's not great, man. I mean, we're going to... I'll check this out, see if Lenny All checks. Right, just this. Yeah, he's going to bet I'm out. I'd better fold. Nope. I'm out. All right. All right. Damn, Grimshaw. Ah, <sighs> oh, I'm sorry. If I wanted small talk, I sure as hell wouldn't have came to you. Let's go. Shall we just play a little more? Three five offsuit. You gotta be kidding me. She called. I'll call one cent, but oh. if they raise, I'm out. That'll do. Lenny, come on, five. man. Uh nope. no. Garbage. Mm. 
and then you don't look at the next hand because you can't play the what if game on this. Well, gentlemen, this is just embarrassing. Don't get smug. This too shall pass. My uncle used to play this. Made me promise not to tell my father. <laughs> Come on. There we go. Pair of tens. There we go. All right, we'll call this. We'll see what they do. Um... Lenny calls. Check. She checks. All right, we're all in. Pair of tens. All right, so if either one of them has a king. All right, just this. Damn. All right, so Lenny bet two cents. I'm going to raise because I'm going to make him think I've got a king. Actually, let's raise them all in. Let's make him Let's make him go all in. <laughs> you want to work on your Brave blood. or fool? Oh, whoops. I should have gone in 16 cents. Oh, shit. That's not good. All in. Yep. I'll call it for two cents, but I don't like that position. Huh. Okay, let's settle this. Pair of eights. Wow. I got a pair of tens. Let's go. Come on. Sorry. Don't give Don't give him an eight. Hmm. Alright. Oh, hey. hey. Thank you, sir. Done. Only a fool don't know when a beating comes. Alright, so what am I going heads up against Miss Grimshaw? Alright, we're going heads up against Grimshaw, chat. You know, this kind of thing is why nothing gets done around here. Here we go. <clears throat> what do you think, chat? You think I could take her down? Queen three off. Yeah. I'll uh, check. All right, queen, ace, two. Pair of the queen. All right, we're going to bet five cents. We're, or actually, no, let's go. Uh, I'm willing to go ten cents on this, uh, Miss Grimshaw. How about that? Fine. All right, so she knows I paired. She might have also paired, or she's sitting on a flush draw. All right, we hit a ten. Uh, she's All right, so now we're looking at a straight draw. If a jack comes out, I hit a straight. No, that's not true. That's not true. I don't have a straight draw. Oh, hurry up. Some of us have work. So I still got the pair here. of queens. Alright, I'm gonna bully her a little bit on this. Fourteen. That's what I got. Milk sop. Boy, she might have an ace. Alright, I'll call Trying it. To give us all a heart attack here? Come on, I need a heart or a diamond. Okay. Boy, she might have the ace. I better go all in. All right. I'm yep, paying she attention. She calls. Okay. Come on, give me there the queen. Don't have an ace. That stinks. Hey. Oh, never mind. Ooh. <laughs> She's dumb for making that call, man. If I'm her, I'm thinking that I had the ace or the queen. There's no way. Onwards we march. Oh, good day for you. Oh my god, I can't believe she called that. <coughs> you got this, you big dumb moron. All right, all right, come on, oh, come on. Say poker's a man. Let's clean her out. You boys can't play to tie your shoes. Clean her out. All right, king nine off suit. That's another good one, another real good one. Let's go ahead and raise her pre-flop here. Here, just a little. <clears throat> Oh, you big blouse. All right. Ooh, she raised. All right, well, that's fine. Real fun. So she's got something. I'll call it. Let's get the flop here. Two eights and a seven. Mm, I'll bet this. She bet six cents on that. I don't know what she could possibly have other than maybe a pocket pair. I'll raise it twelve cents. 
Oh, pride cometh. Two eights, two sevens. Are you kidding me? She just checked. That's an interesting check. Because I bet you if I bet here, she... I bet you she raises me if I bet here. I mean, I don't have anything. I got king high. I got king high, and I can't, I can't imagine she's sitting on a full house. So it, it comes down to, do I check and see what shows up on the river, or do I bet this and see if I can either bet her out of this, or do I see if she's really sitting on something? Because ideally, I would get her to fold here, but I got to put down the right amount. I don't know if she's slow playing a full house. I'm going to check it. Uh-uh, no. Let's let the river determine this. So we hit a three on the river. That doesn't do anything for anybody. Uh, I am content to... Let's see if she re-raises this. We'll go 10 cents. I know. It ain't too exciting. Ugh. Oh, I bought the Looking pot. Good. I bought the pot. Oh, baby. All right, James, you got to cool it on the comments about Miss Grimshaw's appearance, please. Come on. Like, I've seen like three of them. We're good. We get it. Last, except for you, it seems. All right, here we go. See any one of you fellers cheat? I'll take a pinky off them. Okay. Eight three off suit. I mean, I'll check. I'll go in for nothing. Oh God, ace three queen. I pair the lowest card on the board. Yeah, I know. Pretty Little pathetic. small potatoes here. Milk's up. Yeah, I knew I knew she was gonna do that. All right, I'll okay. go for five more cents, but I don't like this at all. We're gonna check this out. Here. What are you gonna throw in? Throwing eighteen cents. For me to buy in on a pair of threes? No. Nah. Nah, nah. Huh. We'll wait for the next okay. hand. Good. Well, then that's my luck gone. Oh, never mind, dear. Come on, you got this. Oh, but you can, James. You so I just ask that, that you, is. you know, cool it on the comments about her appearance. That's all. I don't want to have to time you out. Ace four. All right. All right, we'll raise the ace. There we go. Because I don't like the four oh, kicker. Blouse. Okay. Uh, so, wow, so she re-raised. See ya. I'll take 14 cents on the ace. And I got the flush draw. Oh my god. Alright, so I paired the ace and got a flush draw. If another another spade shows up that's huge because we got an ace. Ace. Oh my god. I wish that that was higher than a four, but that's huge. We're in a really nice position Do it here. In your tent, hmm? Now she's gonna know that I'm sitting on something. But I'm gonna I'm gonna raise 38 cents. We have 69 cents in the pot. Yeah, I'm a razor. That's but... all I got. Oh, I see that's a pair you're growing there. All right, so she calls. See, Ooh! fellers. And we get Oh my god. We hit the 4? Are you kidding? Let's go, Miss Grimshaw. 
I'm gonna take your ass all in. Let's go. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to run a risk of a flush coming up and her sitting on an eight on a spade that was higher than me. I'd much rather buy that pot. Much rather buy that pot. All right, let's go, Miss Grimshaw. Let's go. This is good. This is going well. Uh, this is supposed to be amusement. I keep telling you, face like an open book. Five three offsuit. Not a big fan of that. But I'll check to check. see what we get on the flop. Aired the three again. Boy, I've been pairing a lot of threes. I'll check. Oh, she checks too. All right, give me something good. Give me a five or a three. That four doesn't help me there. I'll check that out again. Another check. You surprised? Yeah, she's gonna buy that pot. That's fine. Ugh, damn. Good. Yep. Okay. I'm out. Mm -hmm. Come on, Miss Grimshaw. I want to knock you out so I can get uh, we can we can we can finish this up. Can't teach me to suck eggs, gentlemen. I always tell myself I'm unlucky, but maybe I'm just not very good. All right. Arthur, 8-3 off suit. You know what? Mm -hmm. I'm out. I don't even want to pay for that pot. It's a crappy starting hand. We get a good starting hand. We're going to try to clean her out. Dude, King, that, that wanted poster is so good. It's so good. I don't know if you're still here, man, but I freaking love that. You have outdone yourself. 5-6 off suit. Ah, uh, God. Uh, 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 uh. Check. I'll check. Jack, Queen, 4. I got a 5 and a 6. I don't like that at all. I'll check this, but she bets I'm out. Well, she checked. All right. This is why I hate playing heads up, man. Pots four cents. Check. How about I light this fire? Now you know what you look like with a mustache. I like it. No, no. All right. I need something good to play yeah. with here. Damn. <laughs> Suck it up. Damn is right. All right, come on. <sighs> I like that he tosses the cards perfectly every time. Five, two, six. Give me something, man. Give me something. Uh, okay. Check. Oh, God. Give me hearts. A one heart. Mm. I mean, I'll check, too. I, this is like... This is garbanzo beans right now. A two? You gonna bet it, Miss Grimshaw? Nope. I'm gonna check out of this, too. I'm both sitting on ace high. Well, there we go. I got nothing. Okay, here it is. She got ace high with a there four pair of twos. I win four cents oh, on a pair of there. twos. Okay, yes. Four cents, chat. We're gonna we're, we're playing the slow game here. Slow. <sighs> well, all good things. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Oh shush! I'm thinking. Look at all the bugs. Oh my god. Big winner. All right, here we go. This is it. Right here. Big hand. Nope, it's not. 9-5 offsuit. I'm getting just all absolute right. trash. What you got? 
she calls, no, I'll check because I'm already in on it. Ooh! Ooh, 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 we pair the nine. All right, so she she can only beat me if she's got a king or if she's got a pocket pair that's higher than nines. So I'm going to bet this really low just to see if she comes in on it. She's not sitting on a ton of chips, so it's got to be it's got to be kind of light. I'm going to play slow. Here. She raised. So she's either sitting on a pocket pair or a king. I'm going to call that. Mm. I'm not going to re-raise her in. A 10. Oh, man. We got three hearts. I don't have any heart. Oh, man. If she's sitting on two hearts. All right. Let's go. I'm still sitting on a pair of nines. Let's take her all in. Let's see if she's... Let's see if she thinks it... Let's see if she thinks that it's worth it to go in here. Sorry, but time to take things up a little. Show me. All right, she's going all in. That's it. What do you got, Miss Grimshaw? Fair uh, King, she hit the king. Come on, give me a nine. Give me a nine. Fuck. Oh, that's fine. Damn. Well, mm, that was uh, that was not ideal. Woman's game, gentlemen. It's a woman. That was probably game. a dumb play. If I if I really think about it, that was dumb. I should have just slow played it and just taken the L. You people. You all know damn well. She I was right to go in there and call that with a king. In real life, I wouldn't have done that. Like if I was playing for real big money. That was me just bossing her around with my chips. All right, king ten. There we go. Um. Forgive me. It's all I can afford. Oh, I'm interested. All right, she re-raised. I'll take that. <laughs> all right, then. Let's go, Miss Grimshaw. Ace, nine, eight. Mm, I'll bet this. She bet 17 cents, which tells me she's made me sitting on an ace. I got a gut shot flush draw. Uh, gut shot straight draw. Uh, I'll call the 17. No, I'll raise it. That's what I got. I'll raise it to 34. See ya. All right, she calls. So she's got to be sitting on a pair of some type or some kind of draw. That two is dead. That sucks. She checks. An interesting check. All right, I'll... Uh, she must have been sitting. Okay, so her check there is either her slow playing an ace or she was sitting on a straight draw and that two killed it for her. You working on this or you fall? In which case, I have the better kicker, but if she's got a pair on the board, she's going to win. So I'm going to go ahead and check nah. this. And I hit the king. You have. Oh, sweet Jesus. All right, Miss Grimshaw. Why don't you, uh, why don't you come in for a buck? She's gonna think I either hit the king or that I'm bluffing trying to buy the pot. Now, she's got me with an ace, but there I don't think go. she's slow playing an ace. Yep. Ha! This is getting fun now. Yep. That's as it should be. I'll buy that. Yes, sir. That king was such a beautiful insurance. Pair that king on the river, baby. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. See, now, poker is a game where people well, like to use hindsight a lot. Sport, to make, Like, sense. amateurs use hindsight to make sense of their current cards, and you can't do that. Just because I hit a king on the river there doesn't mean it's going to happen in the future. And too many times, like, people who gamble well don't ever use hindsight or intuition to make sense of what's going on. <laughs> yes. You can't do that. Because your past hands don't predict your future hands. It's just not how it works. That... that, that deck gets shuffled every single hand so if you've hit a king on the river three times in a row and the next time you got you're waiting on a king on the river our brain wants us to believe that you're going to hit a king on the river because you've seen that represented to that point but that ain't how it works sometimes i love to go all in with nothing just to annoy folk and keep them guessing 
Nine two offsuit. I'll call okay. the one cent, but if she raises. Here's this. So what's a burn card? So you burn a card because it's to help with cheating. It's to it's to help make sure that people don't stack the deck. Because if it was only the first couple cards that were on the top, you could manipulate the deck. If you put the burner cards in, it means you have to go farther into the deck to get the cards out. So it's just it's just cheating it prevention. Tab. That's all it is. All right, I'll play for three cents. Ten cent pot. Five a six. Here. That is nothing for me. I'm out. Yes, indeed. Okay. Hmm. Well, I could play poker in this for hours. This is better than half the poker games that have ever existed. Like the World Series of Poker Games and stuff. Like this plays so much better than those. Rockstar literally has a perfect poker game and they didn't even set out to make a poker game. Yo, King, you're drinking Capri Suns and you're not bringing any for me? I don't know how I feel about that, man. All right, Jack eight off suit. All right, she let's folds. go. All righty. Yep. I'll take my three cents. Mmm, rake it in. Thanks for the two cents, Miss Grimshaw. <coughs> for the one cent, I guess. <laughs> now this is finally getting fun. Don't know why they say poker's a man's game. You boys can't play to tie your shoes. Ace two. All right. Let's go. Not just a little. Way. Come on in, Miss Grimshaw. You need me to hold your hand. Ah, uh, that's fair, King. That's fair. All right, seven, King four. Uh, let's bet this. I know. It ain't too exciting. Yes, all right. All right, she calls five cents. She might be waiting on something. Another seven pops Not up. Not for me. She checks again. Let's bet ten. This is starting to get dull. You slow playing right. a pair? She raises. Okay. So she's slow playing. She absolutely was slow playing a pair there. I don't even know that this is worth my 12 cents. This is where having a bunch of chips on the table. Like, if I didn't have a lot of chips on the table, I don't know that I'd pay 12 cents to see this last card. The chances that an ace is going to pop up here is oh, so low. Up. Some yes. of us have but... work to do around here. And he hits the deuce. Oh, I check. Hit the deuce. Let's go. All in, Miss Grimshaw. I'll take you all in on a deuce. How about a buck sixty-two, ma'am? Bluff, bluff. Oh, she goes in. She's got a better pair than twos. I don't bluff. She slow played trip sevens. Are you kidding? She slow played trip sevens. Oh man. Oh no. Ah, you boys regret inviting me yet? Well, okay. Oh, she got me good there. She got me real good there. That's big F's. Big F's. Fine. Holy hell. Let's go. Let's be brave. All in. You're lying. Oh, she calls it. All right. Uh, Five, seven suited. Let's go. <laughs> she got king this. four. Come on, baby. Oh, he hits the five. Things are <laughs> oh, you didn't deserve that one. He hits the okay. five on the turn. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Oh. Oh my God. I can't believe I paired that five and got it. You've got to be kidding me. Holy shit. 
All right, Queen Nine, let's go. I'm gonna push you all in, Miss Grimshaw. I'm gonna go. Go all in on Queen Nine. Oh, let's yeah. go. What do you got? Yep. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. There we go. <laughs> I'm gonna win this. I'm gonna win this, chat. I'm not letting up. I am the, the the tension is strong. I am going to clean Miss Grimshaw out. I'm gonna do it. <clears throat> oh man. Alright, five four off suit. I don't love that. She's gonna Come fold, on. that's fine. So I assume you've been playing story games because yeah. they're easier to analyze. Yeah, absolutely. Have you always been a story game player? Yes, I have. What's your favorite genre to unwind to? Sports games. I've been playing a lot of NHL 22 oh, offline, and uh, I also have been playing Metroid Dread oh, offline right now. But sports games are my favorite game to, like, unwind with. All right, come on. Here we go. Here we go. 10-3 off suit. Don't love it, but I'll call for one cent. She checks we're in. She raises them out. All right, here we go. Eight, ace, ten. I pair my ten. All right, Miss Grimshaw, put your money where your mouth is. Twenty That's cents. A fun, shall we? Damn it! Things are looking okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Well, it's all right. I can take it. Oh, I'm glad I ain't you right now. All right, chat. I'm putting it on a pole. Can't teach me to suck eggs, gentlemen. I reckon you're a serious player. All right. What you got? King four. I'll raise that. That's all I got. Fine. All right, 12 cents in. Give me something good. Come on. Jack two, three. So I got gut shot straight draw. And that's about it. I'll throw 15. Uh, how about that? Oh, pride cometh. All right, she calls the 15. She's either got a pocket pair or she's waiting. All right, seven to spade. God damn it. Oh, that was dead. I don't like that at all. Let's check that. Let's see what she does with the check. She you gonna see check? This, boys? Nope, she's gonna bet. She's gonna bet 37 cents and I got nothing. She's gotta be sitting on a flush. I'm out. All right. Hmm. All right. I'm out. Now, then that's my luck gone. Oh, bad luck. Going back and forth here. Okay, okay. You're fine, just a little more. You know, this kind of thing is why nothing gets done around here. Ooh, King Jack. All right. All right, we're going to raise here, but we're not going to raise a ton because I want her to play on this. We'll go 10 cents. Now, she's high stacked, so she might try to bully me there around here. Mm, I'll bet this. Ooh, she raised. Okay. All right, Miss Grimshaw. I'll go all in. No, actually, I don't want to go. Uh, do I want to go in? Yeah, I'll go all in. Let's go. Buck 87, all in. I better go all in. Call the bluff. Brave or fool? Ooh, let's go. All right, here. Oh, she's on ace queen? No, I'm on king jack. No. Proper hand. Hmm. Oh, she hit the eight. Or am I bluffing? Well, then. Are you kidding? Okay. We both hit two pair? We both hit two pair? You have to be. You have to. 
to be kidding me. No way. No way she hits ace queen when I hit. That's nuts. That's nuts. I gotta get out. I can't even be mad. I guess. I can't even be mad. I hit two pair King Jack and she hits the ace queen. That's insane. It's insane. Oh, I hate it. I hate it so much. Oh, I'm gonna lift me a hay bale just to just to get all that adrenaline out of my system. Oh my god. That's big F's. That's big F's chat. Capital F's. I can't, like, literally, I can't even be mad about that. Like, the odds on that are so slim that she's going to hit that two pair. And that she's going to hit the ace and that queen. Oh, my God. That was, like, pure elation to just absolute hell in two seconds. My God. I'm a, I gotta, I, Arthur, my, my dude, we gotta, we gotta sleep this one off, man. We have absolutely gotta sleep this one off. I just can't even. We'll go to sleep for 16 hours after that. I need a good night's rest. new day a new day and i'm excited to pick up on that new day on the next one also if you're watching the vod please um leave a comment i like your comments how'd you like this episode is there anything you noticed anything you would have changed i want to make sure that i start saying this if you're watching the vod right now feel free to leave a comment i love reading them and i will respond to them uh, so do that. Thank you for watching.